Nicholson, welcome inside the Burns Arena. It's time for Dixie State of Basketball on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Happy to have you along for tonight's broadcast of Trailblazer Basketball. Dixie State 12-3 overall, 7-2 in the RMAC, hosting the Colorado Christian Cougars. Classic trap game, guys. 1-14 overall, 1-8 in the RMAC. And uh, Dixie State ran away with both contests last year against these two squads, looking to try to do the same tonight, not slip up, want to play fast. Uh, how do you guys look at this game? I look at it, classic trap game, got to be on your A game tonight still. Yeah, I was talking with Coach Judkins a little bit earlier, and, and Judy said can't overlook anybody in this conference. I mean, you don't want to ever lose to somebody that's down at the bottom of the standings. That can really haunt you. And so uh, they're not overlooking Colorado Christian. This Cougar team has, has got some playmakers, and, you know, they played some people tough. They've just been on the short end of those tough losses. Mike, your thoughts? Well, it's a huge game for them. It's, it's They've got to get things rolling, and it's the hardest time to play of the season is mid to end of January. So this is a huge game for them to get rolling and get prepared for a huge month of February. Indeed it will be. Colorado Christian coming in at 1-14 overall, 1-8 in the Ardmac, led by head coach Jeff Hironaka in his third season at CCU. 11 wins, 60 losses at Colorado Christian. On the other side, Coach Judkins, his 27th coach as a head coach, 15th here at Dixie State, 274 and 129 overall. Wow. Guys, he coaches a few more years, he's, and he's going to hit the 600 win mark for his career. He's at 558 right now overall. I mean, and, and the thing that Mike and I have been talking about this season, we love, he coaches the same whether he's up by 50 or whether he's down by 20. I yeah. mean, it's, it's incredible to see. And he's having fun right now. He's having fun. Yeah. He's meshed this new group together and, you know, still tied for first in the conference, entering tonight at 7-2. and two. And, you know, I know they would have loved to get the sweep on the road last week, had that three-point loss to Metro State. But this is still a, a fun team that's got so many of their goals still intact as we're into the new year. Right. Absolutely. That'll do it for a, a very, very short TDS pregame show. We're going to take a two-minute timeout for the National Anthem. We come back, we'll name some Lonnie Boys barbecue keys to the game and Boulevard home starting lineups. It's Dixie State of Basketball. Two-minute timeout and back as the Trailblazers host Colorado Christian. You know, we've been brainstorming for new ideas on Trailblazer Weekly, and we thought, why don't we try to get some more well-known personalities on the show? And then we thought, who better than Brooks the Bison? He would be a fantastic guest host. Okay, Brooks. Obviously, being a co-host didn't work out the way we planned. So we thought, we can throw him in the control room and he can help run the show. But he's got hooves instead of hands, so he couldn't exactly push the buttons or control the dials that he needed to. And as you can imagine, we had a terrible show that week. I mean, nothing was right. We were coming from breaks when we didn't even realize we were live. It just, it just didn't work out. So we kept thinking about it, and finally, light bulb. He can't mess up being a camera operator, right? Wrong. He couldn't wear the headset, which means he couldn't hear the director. Uh, Brooks actually doesn't know right from left, believe it or not. And he spent more time taking selfies and posting to social media than running his camera. I mean, who knew that Brooks the Bison had his own Instagram? We decided that Brooks was better off in his natural habitat where he belongs. Trailblazer Weekly, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on CEC TV, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and Dixie State Athletics YouTube page. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me, think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me, sun. It's gonna shine on me, sun. It's gonna shine on me. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. Beautiful rendition of the National Anthem as we are at break, and we are set to play some basketball. Of course, first we've got to name some keys to the game. We've got to name some starting lineups for you, and uh, we'll get that all done before the tip. Also want to remind you, if uh, uh, if you haven't heard Dixie State, the women's team, 61-54 comeback win. Huge win for them. 
for their 12th win of the season. 12 and four overall, seven and three in the RMAC now. And head coach J.D. Gustin and crew, uh, you had him on the show today. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, they're doing some things this year, trying to make it a special season in their last year in D2. Yeah, he was very honest though. He still feels like they're maybe just a little bit behind where he wanted them to be, but boy, oh boy, they're taking huge strides this year really in the mix for home conference playoff game and obviously big one tomorrow night again and then a big one with Colorado Mesa next weekend. So fun stretch and the women are playing well. Let's give you some uh, starting lineups first for the CCU Colorado Christian Cougars. They're gonna a little bit different than they have been starting. So I don't know if uh, Jake Hornick is hurt or just not starting tonight, but he's been averaging their leading score of 13.5 points per game. And guys, he's not in the starting lineup. The Cougars will start like this. Six foot four junior guard Aiden Cantwell. A six foot five uh, junior guard forward combo, Justin Engesser. He can shoot it from outside. A six foot eight sophomore forward, Luke Martin. A six foot 11 sophomore center, Spencer Hoffman. And a five foot 11 sophomore guard, Jeremiah Dickerson tonight getting the start instead of uh, it's Jake Hornick. I don't know if you guys have heard something I haven't. Hornick is the team's leading scorer, not in the starting five tonight. Yeah, you never know if it's just, you know, maybe sending a message or uh, not feeling well or a little bit nicked up. Maybe he's going to cut his minutes a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. I haven't heard anything, but uh, Ingeser can really shoot it. Just over 40% from the three-point line. He shot 81 attempts this year. This is a guy that has a, you know, 6'5 player. It'll be interesting to see how they defend him, if they, they defend him with a four or with a three. So that's definitely certainly that's got Juddy's attention tonight. I would actually think that Coach Judkins, with that change, you'll see a lot of zone from Dixie State tonight. Look, look for that 2-3 zone, I think, will be uh, his answer to that change. Of course, Dixie State is in a group. They've found their starting five of choice. Jack Pagankoff, Jason Youngblood, Frank Stain, Hunter Schofield, and Jared Green, your starting five tonight for the Trailblazers. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Boulevard Home. Now the last thing left to do before we tip this thing off and get underway is the name of some Lonnie Boys Barbecue starting lineup. And, and Mike, we always turn to you for these. You, you're the coach, you coach with Coach Judkins. You know him well, you know it's in his mind. You're always talking with him throughout the week. What's been the discussion this week? What's the keys of the game tonight? Well, we've always talked about how important it is to start well. Trailblazers this year, they've, they've got off to some good starts. It's that middle, it's that 18 minute mark to the nine minute mark. So that, that middle of the first half is critical for them. Look for them to jump out and get a good lead, but they've got to maintain the lead. Yeah, they wanted a hot start. You know, yep. you, you want to put the pedal down from the get-go. You want to rebound, defend, rebound, run. Juddy yep. says it over and All over. Rinse and repeat, and that's no different tonight. Uh, that's going to be important for them. And then Juddy also tells me he wants to get Frank Stain. Might draw a couple <laughs> sets for him early in the game to get him some confidence because only two points on that last road trip last weekend. His scoring's dipped just below 10 points per game, but he's a valuable, valuable player today and in the future as just a 6'6 freshman. 20 minutes on the clock, let's play basketball. It's Green jumping it for Dixie State. It's Hoffman for Colorado Christian. 6'11 against 6'8, and 6'11 is gonna win that battle. CCU the first possession of the night. Blue uniforms, white numbers for CCU. Here's Cantwell into the lane, kicking it out. Martin drives baseline right side, jumper is short, tipped around, and Hunter Schofield the rebound for Dixie State. Pagankoff ahead to Jared Green, calling for it inside, and he'll score off the window. Saw that he was open, said, give me the ball, and he scores. This is his sixth start. I mean, a junior college transfer, and he's still so raw, but Juddy has inserted him into the starting lineup, and he's paying big dividends. 2-0, Dixie State the lead, 19-25 to go. Of course, Trailblazers in the home whites, red numbers, blue trim, as we are just underway. 40 seconds gone by. Cantwell will step into a three on the angle left side. It bangs off the back iron, and Dixie State has the rebound. Pagankoff has it knocked away by Dickerson. He regains. Trailblazers still with it. 20 to shoot. Youngblood to Schofield. Schofield to the left side of Pagankoff. Will wrap around past the Hunter Schofield, going back door, and he lays it in. An early candidate for our catering concepts play of the game. Well, that's four straight points where the big guys have scored in the paint. They're going to push the ball extremely fast and then look for those big guys either trailing or establishing that post position early. How do you see that pass? Magical. Great. Martin to answer the other way. No. Offensive rebound. Hoffman, his putback rims out. Another offensive rebound, and the Cougars have it again out to Engerser, right wing. Martin. Trying to skip past it, stolen by Youngblood. Youngblood in transition, dishes to Frank Stain, checks his feet, fires a three, too strong. Tap back out by Green. Trailblazers have it again. Pagankoff stops in the lane, whips it inside Schofield, off his leg, chases it down. They'll whip it back out and start over again. 
Pagan Kopp on the angle left side, now to the free throw line. Inside Jared Green, the entry pass, mid post left, one dribble into the paint, a floater with the right, too strong, and Hoffman the rebound for CCU. And Hoffman was, you know, a freshman last year, a year older, looks like he's filling into his body, really athletic, nice defense there by the big guy. 17.58 to go, first half. Dixie State a 4-0 lead. Backdoor pass to Dickerson, and it'll leave it for Hoffman, a good play. And great ball movement. And CCU on the board, Dixie State a 4-2 lead, 17.45 to go. Yeah, that's due to unselfish, that extra pass. Got an easy bucket for Hoffman. Cougars going to need a lot of that tonight. 17.35 remaining. Here in half number one, Green to Stain. Stain passing inside Green, and he's fouled on his way to the bucket. And a great play there. Love you know, Stain looking for shots, but he also can distribute it well when he needs to as well. Stopped at the elbow, found Green wide open. He's going to the free throw line. This talks about his versatility there. You know, he, he, He's not just a catch and shoot guy. He's not just a drive guy, but he sees the floor very well. He understands the offense, and for a freshman, he's very good at finding his fit. Hopefully, tonight, he can find that scoring column. Yeah, nice little bounce pass, though, and then just attack mode. Just design set piece play there, and Green earning a trip to the line. Nice one for two start from the field. Now trying to add to that total from the stripe. Makes both free throws for Jared Green, a 60% free throw shooter this season. And the Trailblazers a 6-2 advantage, 17-28 to go in the first. Martin has to throw it into traffic as Dixie State goes full court pressure and it's tapped out of bounds near midcourt. And so Colorado Christian at least will get to advance it that far. Shot clock still reached 30 seconds. Usually on a tip, they'll bring it down to 29, but they'll throw it in. Colorado Christian has it. Cantwell for Dickerson. Just one for five so far from the field for the Cougars. You need to get a high percentage shot attempt here. Dickerson drives, stops at the left elbow, jumper rims out, offensive rebound. Hoffman, the putback, yes. Hoffman could be trouble tonight for Dixie State. And Dickerson grabs the and steal. Dickerson gets a steal on the inbound pass and scored, and we're tied at four. Yeah, just anticipation was there, and then just stepped into a little 12 foot jumper, buried it. Sneaky. Six to six should be the score. It says six four on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's a quick 4-0 run there. You're right, 6-6. Yeah. Six, six. They're fixing it. The referees side immediately, and they're going to get an extra bucket up on the board. Coach Jefferson's <laughs> having a little fun he with it. He said, why are you stopping my play <laughs> offensively? You can fix that in a timeout or something. There's a replay. Dickerson yeah. for our television audience. Just sneaky right there. And a good little left-handed stroke knocks it down. Dixie State, after leading 4-0, we're all tied up at 6. Pagan Cop. To Hunter Schofield will lob into Green. Catches and travel. Double team came and it kind of threw him off and he traveled. We're definitely seeing a contrast here. Colorado Christian opening the game 0 for 4. They've connected on three of their last four. So their, their shots are, are a much higher percentage and, and definitely within that offense. Coach Hiranaka is going to run this slow offense and look to get a high quality shot. CCU with it. Pagan Kopp is stripped from Hoffman. Down the lane, and lay it up and in with a foul as Dickerson chasing him from behind. Made contact, and Jack Pagan caught the steal, the score, the foul. And beautiful anticipation. He ball hawking guard, stays with it. When Hoffman brings it just chest high, he strips it, and then to cut up and under and finish with the finger roll. Gets a little bit of a benefit of the whistle there, but we'll take it. Jack Pagan caught at the vintage at Canyonlands free throw line. And the Trailblazers try to make it a three-point lead. Jack, free throw good. I really thought Dickerson was just trying to blow by. I don't think he was trying to foul him there. There was just slightly a little bit of contact and one. And now Dixie State up by three. 16-18 remaining, approaching the under-16 media timeout. 9-6 lead for Dixie State. Three on the way for CCU from the left corner. It's short and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Dixie State. Cantwell couldn't convert from the left corner. Yeah, Hoffman very active right now. Just got a little bit of a tip and then forced the official to say it was last touch by the Trailblazers. And Hoffman's a good player. We're watching him on film this week. And just a sophomore, like you mentioned, Devin, he's, he's going to grow and, and get, and he turns it over there. Frank Stain gets the, the steal for Dixie State. Pagankoff hesitates, then blows past Dickerson and lays it in. Oh, I love it. I love it because he just shows you like he's looking to stop or almost pass, and then he crosses over and blows by you. Well, you have to respect that pause. You know, he sees the floor so well that you, it knocks the defender off guard. You have to respect that. And he notices it and uses that dribble to get by him. 
11-6, Dixie State the lead. 15-40 remaining, first half. Cantwell into the corner to Martin. 10 to shoot for the Cougars. Martin into the lane, misses. Offensive rebound, Hoffman good, and a foul on the putback with six seconds on the shot clock. Offensive rebound, you know, Hoffman, he's, he's tough down there. He's smart, but he's also very gritty and tough. So the basket will count. That'll bring us to the media timeout, 11 to eight, with 15.31 to go in the first half. 60 second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. When Southern Utah thinks of home furnishings, they think of Boulevard Home. But when Boulevard Home thinks about home, Southern Utah comes to mind. In 1974, local pioneer descendant Tony Whitwer decided to start a furniture business. He decided to name it after Southern Utah's most famous street, St. George Boulevard. Even though Tony has retired, his family's legacy still lives in who we are, a company dedicated to one goal, making your house home. Boulevard Home. Home is who we are. 15-31 to play Dixie State, an 11-8 lead, and shooting 66% for the field, but just a three-point advantage, largely in part. Colorado Christian, five offensive rebounds, four second-chance points. Trevor has got to crash those boards defensively a little bit better. But well, I love how Jack Pagenkoff has started this game. He started it fast, good decisions, already five points, and a couple assists. He's really played well in the get-go here tonight. Hoffman will make the free throw to complete the three-point play after being fouled before the break. He's, he's got seven of the Cougars' nine points. Leighton Parker into the game for Dixie State as well as Cameron Chatwin. And Cameron's really been playing well as of late. Which is good to see because he's a senior, he's a leader, great kid, hard worker. Good to see him starting to find his range a little bit. Dream shake as Mike coined him last year. Pagan Kopp, left wing. To Schofield on the right angle. Top of the key, Chatwin thought about a three and said to Parker, he'll fire a three from the left wing. Rattles in and out. A good look, but the rebound at CCU. And here come the Cougars. But unselfish possession because Leighton Parker curled, could have shot the three early, gave it up, got it back, got a better look, just didn't hit it. Great patience there by Dixie State. Engeser for three from the left wing. It's good, and we are tied at the CCU is taking the lead, 12 to 11. It was only a matter of time before he got yeah. a good look and hit it because 81 attempts, shooting 40% from downtown. And a turnover for the Trailblazers. Dixie State turns it over. Here come the Cougars inside of Cantwell. Floater, no. Ball tapped around is loose, and Chatwin will track it down for Dixie State. Stain, left side, bump, no whistle. Maintains the possession. The lob into Schofield. It's knocked out of his hands and stolen. Now the ball's loose, still loose, into the hands of Pagenkopf. It's everywhere. Jack's got it, and it's knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. Dixie State will maintain possession. Well, I think the spin move was probably a good idea at the time, but Ingeser was kind of floating down the baseline, and he spun right into him and then had no shot attempt there. He was double teamed under the basket. But that free possession, right? He, he gets the turnover. He's outnumbered. He's going to try to get a foul, take it right to the rim, see what happens. And a whistle and a foul inside will be called against Christian Hodge. Just checked into the game as he was holding the Dixie State player trying to cut across the lane for the inbounds pass. You never want to start a game with a foul when you just jump off the bench and come in and get caught with one there. But that bounce pass kind of went through everybody yeah, there. Great pass. And the official saw the hold. Kind of feel like this is an important possession with Dixie State down here. Still a long way to go first half, I get it, but Kind of went cold a little bit last couple possessions. Nichols inside Hill, score and one. Picking up where he left off last week at a career high 16 on Saturday. And he gets the bucket and the foul. Well, if you look at this lineup, it, as they're inbounding the ball, the first thing I thought is who's going to be the scorer for Dixie State? You've got Dixon Youngblood on the floor. You've got Frank Stain that has a potential, but there's not a lot of guys that are 
known for their scoring. It's a guy like Jacob Nichols that's going to step up and get some of these plays, get us to that media timeout while you've got some of these guys getting a breath. Yeah, you know what? I think that was a big confidence game for him with that career high 16 points mm -hmm. last Saturday that you referred to, Carrick. And, uh, you know, when you got a nice cushion, you can get some guys some reps. He hadn't played a lot, then he came in and showed it to Coach Judkins he was ready to go. Here comes Dixie State up, or excuse me, Colorado Christian the other way for a goalie. Out of Ingeser, leaving for Michael. Michael for goalie. Right wing guarded by Parker. Tries to pass through the lane and it's tipped and stolen by Dason Youngblood. Youngblood bounces inside Nichols, catches, lays it up and in with the left hand. Nichols with five points already. And all in the paint there and in the free throw. I mean, I love the aggressiveness that this kid is playing with. His confidence is rising. It's a 16-12 Dixie State lead by four, 13-25 remaining. Angusser, left wing three on the way and in, and he can really shoot it. And he's hit two from the same spot. Dixie State lead is one. And he was in triple threat before he even caught that pass. And as soon as he touched his hands, he let it fly in rhythm. Youngblood to answer high off the glass the other way. It's up and in. 18-15, Dixie State a three-point lead. 13 minutes to go until the break. Ingeser, skip pass to the left wing and Cantwell into the corner. Three ball on the way, air ball from Jaden Michael and it's knocked out of bounds by Dason Youngblood. And CCU will maintain possession. De defensively, Dixie State really working hard. You're forcing a corner three there but still having a little trouble on the defensive glass right now. It's interesting because Colorado Christian, they, they really want to slow it down. They run that Princeton-style offense where they spread you out, and there's a lot of cutters, a lot of movements. They usually take a lot of the shot clock, but they're running with Dixie State, and it's really causing some problems. Yeah, it's almost like that. Juddy, Juddy told me it's, it reminds him a lot of that old Air Force yeah, offense. Yep, exactly. Jason Youngblood called for a foul, holding. And now CCU will try to inbound again. Angusser, inbound pass to Hyatt. He just checked in, missed a three from the left corner. But an offensive foul, loose ball foul, going against Hodge, pushing off as he tried to get position for the rebound. Yeah, and I think if he doesn't extend the arm, he's okay. But once you extend, then you're going to get caught there. And that's what the official saw. He was in position because the, the ball had carom almost right to yeah. him. I don't think he needed to extend the arm. 12.48 to go, first half. Dixie State an 18-15 advantage. Youngblood harassed by Hyatt all the way up the floor. Stops at the top of the key. Gives to Nichols. Out of Parker. Chatwin. Three point land straight away. Hand off to Andre Wilson. Now Nichols. Nichols. Loses. Regains to Cameron Chatwin. Catch and shoot. Three on the way. Bingo. A Mountain America three for Cameron Chatwin. And Dixie State lead is 6 21 15. So nice to have a big guy that can step outside and pull that defender out there and able to hit down that catch and shoot three. That's a huge weapon for Coach Jeffries. 12 10 remaining. Dixie State a 21-15 lead. Here's Michael into the lane. Hangs, can't hit, but lost out of bounds by Dixie State. Yeah. Still having trouble securing that defensive rebound. But Jaden Michael there kind of got caught between, do I want to use the backboard or not, yeah. and kind of missed everything there. And it was such a, a shot that was so far off that allowed, you know, the trouble is to have trouble to secure that defensive rebound. Colorado Christian calls a 30-second timeout, and at the 12:01 mark, they'll stretch it to the media. Dixie State a 21-15 lead. 60-second timeout, and back to the Burns on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Camping World is here to help you connect to adventure and explore the outdoors with friends and family. Offering new and pre-owned RVs to fit every budget and thousands of parts and accessories for any need. Camping World has it all. With over 130 super centers nationwide, you're never far from America's number one RV dealer, no matter where your adventures take you. Whether you need an RV, parts, or service, Camping World is here to help you every step of the way. Visit Camping World in St. George or shop CampingWorld.com today.
21-15, Dixie State a six-point lead, 12-01 remaining. You talk about guys that they come in and make a spark, and it seems like it's a different guy every night for Dixie State. How about Jacob Nichols coming in, five points, and just playing with energy. And you can tell he's just happy. He, he wants to be out there. He wants to be contributing. Well, and Johnny rewards guys that are working hard in practice, and then when they got the chance to shine like he did last Saturday, now he's getting earlier minutes, and he's producing again. So, you know, he's earning minutes right now, which is, uh, which is good to see. Happy Angus, sir. Fires up a deep three from the right wing as a shot clock expires and he splashes it home. Man, when you're on, you're on. I don't think Mike Olson would even touch him in a three-point shooting contest. <laughs> Not tonight. 21-18, Dixie State. The three-point lead, 11.39 to go. Chatwin gives a little pump fake and then hands off to Dason Youngblood. And he's being held by Christian White Hyatt. That got it. You got it. Find Ingerser right now, cool him off. Got to throw the kitchen sink at him. Try to get him off his rhythm because he's starting to yeah. catch fire right now. Already nine points from downtown. And they're all catch and shoot. That's so the up. game plan is going to be make him dribble, make him do something different. If he beats you off the dribble, that, that's fine. But make him do it. Don't yeah. let him keep catch and shoot. Yeah, he, he's hit all three. The rest of the team's 0 for 4. Yeah. As they're 3 for 7 from the three point line so far in this game. Elijah Oliver is into the game for CCU. He averages. 11 points a game, and Pagan Kopp going to get called for a carry. It's happened a couple of times this year as he kind of lets like that ball settle in the palm of his hand as he decides where he wants to go with it. And it seemed like, you know, three or four years ago there started to be an emphasis, even in the NBA we saw a carry uh -huh. call, and now yeah. he seems like it's gone away. That's the first time I think I've seen a carry in a long time. Could you imagine an official called a carry in the NBA? What kind of reaction you'd get? <laughs> Scoring would drop a little yeah. bit. Turnovers would rise. Yep. Oliver, jumper from the free throw line, no. And then a foul against Hunter Schofield in pursuit of the rebound, knocked Jeremiah Dickerson to the floor. And that's just a hustle play. Both guys charging the ball. Because he couldn't secure it cleanly the first time, Dickerson had a beat on it, and then their arms got tangled up and can't really disagree with that call. No, not at all. I mean, that's, that's a clean foul, but it was a very hard foul, and definitely a size disadvantage there. On the floor for Dixie State, it's Pagankoff, Wilson, Parker, Chatwin, Schofield. Inside to Hoffman for CCU into the corner. Hyatt for three, and he shot it up and over the top of the rim. Pagankoff the rebound, quick pass ahead to Schofield. Catch, can't lay it in on the run, but it's tapped out. Andre Wilson has it, his runner won't go. And Hoffman the rebound for CCU. I think Hoffman kind of forced Wilson to try to go teardrop there, a little shot put, and just didn't come off his hand right. Oliver traveled. Kind of got the bounce the ball, it went up high, he couldn't secure it, and fumbled it around. And turned it over. Yeah, and already six turnovers for the Cougars in, you know, under 10 minutes of game time. And yet they're still hanging around just down by three. 10.35 to go. Dixie State a 21-18 lead. Pagan Kopp to Schofield. Green wants it. They can't get it to him. Instead to Parker. Right wing. Ball knocked out of his hands. Regains. Whips it back to Schofield. 17-footer. Baseline right. No. Ball tapped out. Pagan Kopp chases down the long rebound. Into the corner. Parker for three. No. Rims out. Hoffman slow getting up for CCU. Offensive rebound. Green to the putback is good. Well, that, that's a type of move that it, it's weight room related. You know, I mean, he's he's a strong guy, and he showed it right there with that power move to the rim. 23-18, Dixie State lead is five. Ten minutes to go. We are halfway through the first half of play. Hoffman, floater with the right hand, and a foul on the ground against Jared Green before the shot attempt. As they were matching, you know, Hoffman kind of going at Green, and Green's not giving up any any ground and gets called for it. Tough call. He's in the right position. I don't know what else you teach your kid to do that situation. Just uh, sometimes he'll get you for that little, that last bump as he went to that right hand hook. Not a lot there though. Nothing certainly up top as the shot was released. His, as they give inside to Michael on the inbounds pass, he'll dunk it home with two hands. Athleticism, I like that dunk from Michael. Good inbound design play. Wilson going pick and roll with Josh Newbold. Just checked in for Green, he's fouled, almost got the and one. 
Yeah, I think Newbold needs to roll a little bit further down the lane there because he's still about eight, nine feet out there and then has to kind of almost go to a hesitation, put it on a bounce. Still, though, you like that play because he's earned a trip to the line. Well, it's a great screen. And, you know, where he caught it's that awkward, that mid-range game where he didn't have enough room to catch and shoot where he's really good, but it's still hard to put it one or two dribbles and get to the rim. That pump fake, though, got Oliver kind of out of position after after he had kind of recovered to get between him and the basket and keep him in front. 73% free throw shooter is Newbold. He makes the first. He'll have one more. Frank Stain back in for Dixie State. And Newbold's got a bright future. He's only a redshirt sophomore out of Bingham High School. Of course, just coach Jake Schroeder knows him pretty well. Makes both free throws, and it's a five-point lead again. 25-20, and the Trailblazers get it past the five-point mark. Dickerson. Up and along, hands off to Cantwell. Cantwell to Engesser. Engesser to Dickerson, he can't handle it. Loses it out of bounds and up into the stands. Yeah, it's just empty possessions like that. that Dixie State can try to capitalize on, try to get this crowd, good crowd tonight, got to get this crowd on their feet right now and try to push this lead up. Three here, making the largest lead of the night. Even with a two, I think you could. Yeah, have not been over six. An opportunity to get to seven here. 25-20, Trailblazers by five. 9.15 to go, yeah. lob into Schofield. Catches, knocked out of his hands, regains and scores. Good hands by Schofield. The, the pass was there. Oliver kind of blindside blocked it, but went right back up. Little go-go gadget grab yeah. and then put it back up and in. That's it. 27-20. She stayed a seven-point lead. Dickerson leads for Oliver. Jump step in the lane. Floater with the right hand is good. Good footwork by Oliver there to kind of step into that leaner. That's a high percentage shot from the middle of the key. 27-22. C State, a five-point lead again. Wilson left alone at the left elbow. He says, thanks for leaving me open, and knocks it in. That's, it's Andre's game right there. He knows when his shots are there, and that shot was a great high percentage shot for Andre. 29-22. Ingeser, one step inside the arc straight away, and he splashes it home. Angusser knocks it in, and he is four for four from the field. He's got 11 points. Yeah, and you know what? He's getting it within the framework of the offense. He's not pushing the issue. Newbold for three straight away. Hard off the back iron. Tapped by Schofield. Pagankoff's got it, and Dixie State will reset. Schofield calling for it. Mid post left, working on Angusser. Gets around Angusser. He's fouled. Two free throws coming for Hunter Schofield. Hunter saying, give me the dang ball. I'm ready. Yeah, and he made a crafty move. Yes. Nice little drop step, and then kind of went with an up and under and really forced the, the whistle to be blown. Schofield, four points tonight, 72% free throw shooter. And, and Coach First Jun one on the way, yes. And Coach Junk has told me, you know, he's been even better than they thought when they recruited him. How often do you get a recruit <laughs> in this is a junior college kid that's been better than you thought the kid you were recruiting. He has really flourished under Coach Judkins. Misses the second free throw, but it's tapped back out. Dixie State will maintain. Schofield can't score. And now Oliver has it for CCU. To Dickerson. In the left corner and Cantwell. And an offensive foul as Cantwell ran over Hunter Schofield. Yeah. Someone still put a ball, a shot up, and it fell on the top of Frank Stain's head. Well, you talk about Frank, or, uh, Hunter Schofield, he, he does a lot of things. Yes, he's your top scorer. Yes, he rebounds the ball exceptionally well. But you see him take charges. He's doing a lot of little things. But I will also add, he's a 4.0 student. You know, I mean, he gets it done in the, class, the classroom as well. So he's all around great pickup for Coach Judson. I know there was a lot of pride this week as we got a timeout, but that, that academic record that they set, I think yeah. the news kind of came out first of the week back on Monday. I, you know, I've talked to a number of coaches, a couple of student athletes, and they're taking a lot of pride in that, which is kind of exciting to see. And I know some of the women's sports were leading the way, but you know, foot, football and basketball, they, they were not far behind there helping Dixie State in the fall semester to the, the best athletic GPA they've had. Well, and, that, and that's the second semester in a row yeah. that they've done that. 3.26 so, and yep. some change or something. I mean, I mean you can get a 3.2, even over 3.0, you know, as a, as a whole athletic program, you know, with football. I mean, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it is great. You know, they're. They're definitely student athletes and give the coaches a lot of credit. You know, working with those coaches with the academic, the coaches take it so serious. And every one of our coaches here at Dixie State really emphasize academics first 
and it shows with a 3.2 GPA and climbing. Uh, it's remarkable. Yeah, and what's remarkable is the 52.4 percent. Yeah, it stays. Do it. I don't even feel like they're shooting like lights out or anything, but they're w over 50 percent right now. A little bit uh, sloppy from downtown. Although I think the Trailblazers' shot selection from beyond the three-point line has been good. They're just one for five. On the flip side, Mesa shooting 43 percent from the field, and Ingus are three threes to get them at 37 and a half percent out of their eight attempts. Yeah, he's definitely been the difference for Colorado Christian. Come out's brought to you by Dairy Queen. Back in play we go. Thank all of our great Dixie State Athletic sponsors. 7.38 remaining, Dixie State a 30 to 24 lead. Andre Wilson catch and shoot. Three balls straight away, rattles it home. He's got five points. And that's just a mistake by the Cougars. I mean, he comes up around the top curls and there's nobody there. He got to bury that triple, and he did. Mountain America three-pointer for Andre Wilson. Aiden Cantwell the other way. A shot is blocked by Josh Newbold and out of bounds. CCU will maintain possession with 17 to shoot. But Cantwell was the one that got called on that charge, and now he's getting blocked. He's having trouble with, with the size mismatch there. And Schofield's making plays. 33-24, Dixie State a game-high lead of nine. Jacob Nichols back in for Dixie State. Here's Ingeser to Dickerson. Dickerson to Oliver. Ingeser into the corner. Cantwell, three ball on the way, rims out. Schofield the rebound, hand off to Pagankoff. Jack, surveying his options, gives to Schofield. Now to Stain, free throw line jumper on the way from Frank. No, but he's fouled. And he'll go to the line with an opportunity to see a couple go through there and then try to let that translate into the rest of the game. You know, there's roughly seven minutes, 6.51 to go. You know, these, these next 6.51, Dixie's really got to see some separation. This is their chance to really go into halftime with a lot of momentum, and, and it has to happen here in the next six minutes. They've really got to get going, push the ball, get back to that Dixie State brand of basketball where they're just running up the floor and, and defensively just aggressive and rebounding the ball. But it's, it's going to be a huge seven minutes. And believe it or not, Frank Stain's first point since two weeks ago against UCCS. Here, when he had a career high, 20. Makes both free throws, he's got two. Judkins told me though, he had a really good week of practice this week, was working extremely hard, really pleased with how he stayed committed even though he's in a little bit of a slump scoring the ball. 35-24, Cougars the other way. And a foul called against Wilson. You know, it's, it's interesting about Stain as he tries to get through that slump, he, he's only taken like, two, three shot attempts in those games he hasn't scored in. He'd just like to see him shoot the ball a little bit more, try to shoot out of that slump. Yeah, sometimes when you're a freshman and you got some other leaders on the team, you know, it, it's difficult because you don't want to let your upperclassmen down. You don't want to force the issue. And sometimes you're just not feeling it. Hoffman inside for CCU, and he's fouled. Schofield got caught a little out of position, going for a steal, tried to recover, and it's actually Nichols coming from the help side to help Schofield call for the foul. A funny story about Frank Stain, that last road trip, you know, he, he sat down with a few guys and said, man, this this travel stuff is, is getting hard. It's it's getting rough. Welcome and to the RMAC, Frank. One of the guys said, Frank, it's only Thursday, man. We still got two states and a lot of miles and two to games travel. to play. <laughs> Hoffman so, makes the first free throw. Freshman showing signs of not used to that travel, uh, but he's not going to be a freshman much longer. He's saying, I got on this team at the wrong time. They used to go to Southern California and Hawaii, and now we're going to Colorado every weekend. Of course, that's all going to change. Yeah, Chicago State, <laughs> Texas, Seattle. Kansas City. Kansas City. I'll tell you what, I love the Windy City. I love Shy. I've only been there yeah. once, but it was the pizza there is. Giordano's. Oh, baby. Both free throws are good from Hoffman. It's a 35-26 Dixie State lead, 6.20 to go. Pagankoff. It's inside, forces one, misses it, but it's cleaned up by Nichols. Frank Stain for three left wing, and there it is. His first field goal since the UCCS game two weeks ago. Saw a couple free throws go through, and here we go. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need. You just need it going through the net, and then it makes it seem a little bit easier. You got that shooting motion down, and uh, again, it kind of bounced out to him and knocks it down, nothing but the bottom. 38-26, Dixie State a 12-point lead, a game-high lead. 5.52 to go until halftime. Dickerson. Guarded by Pagankoff, gets in the lane, spins right, fadeaway jumper is short. And Pagankoff the rebound. Dickerson trying to steal it away, but Jack keeps it from him. 
Lobs inside Schofield. One on one with Martin inside. It's knocked out of Schofield's hands and into the student section. Now it's rolling back over to the cheerleaders. Dixie State will maintain possession. And I like the patience of, of going to that little drop step and trying to wait so the double team, he can kind of split it, but just lost the handle. Here's Nichols on the inbounds pass, working inside, can't get it to go. His first miss of the night. He's asking for a foul, didn't get it. And CCU has possession. Cougars trying to cut this lead under double digits. With 5.18 to go until halftime. Martin to Dickerson, right wing. Out of Hoffman. Hoffman to Martin. Martin a couple of dribbles, four to shoot, fumbles out to Cantwell, fires a deep three as the shot clock expired. It dies on the back iron. Hunter Schofield the rebound, hands off to Pagenkoff. Jack dribbles up the floor, pulls up from the left elbow, missed it, and the rebound to Cantwell. That was a real early shot. And now here comes CCU the other way. Dickerson hangs and a blocking foul yeah, it was against Dixie State. Interesting that Jack shot that because on the defense set, he tugged on his jersey. He yeah. wanted a breather. And so maybe he just didn't want to run through the complete offense there. I don't know. <laughs> well, he, he picks up a quick foul there. You know, he can go to the free throw line and, and get, create an opportunity to get a sell. But, you know, like, very, very early shot. And you can see Coach Chuck, he's telling him, hey, I'll, I'll get you back. And, and Andre Wilson waiting and, to and check in for him. Dickerson got bailed out there. That yes, really was not much of a foul on Schofield. Did they tag that on Schofield? It was Schofield, he his was second. He was kind of giving ground going straight up, and Dickerson had kind of put that ball way down low and really didn't have a shot and got kind of bailed out. Dickerson has three as he makes the first free throw. Andre Wilson and Cameron Chatwin back into the game for Dixie State. Both free throws splashed home by Dickerson, and he'll check out. And Claude McKessie will check in. I like that name, Claude McKissie. I can live with that. Well, Mike Olson has a nice ring to it, though, too, you know? Not the Claude McKessie style, though. I mean, that's, that's a smooth name right there. Stain bounces inside Chatwin, working on Hoffman. He's fouled. Two free throws coming for Cameron Chatwin. Dixie State just going at it, relentless, saying, yeah, we're either going to score inside or you're going to foul us when we get to the free throw line. If you pound it in enough, and he forced maybe the double team, and then he can get the kick out and get some open looks right now. But one-on-one, -on -one, they're, they're winning a lot of those low post battles, or they're getting to the foul line like Cameron Chatwin just did. And they got the reach out there. I don't think that was on Hoffman. And they called it on Cantwell, yeah, that's the, the reach. Right, that's yep. the right call. Missed the free throw. Offensive rebound, Stain, and he's fouled. by Luke Martin, and that was, I mean, no play on the ball right there. Just grabbed him and pulled him down. Yeah, great effort, though, on the glass by the freshman, Frank Stain. Miss comes out. He's the only guy has got a chance, and somehow gets it and goes up strong and right back to the foul line. Stain makes the first free throw. He's got six. You know, huge start. We were talking about a little bit in the pregame, getting him going early on in this game. and Nice start for Frank. Missed that second yep. one, but still. You like his activity, like the fact he's seen it through the net a few times. The second one rattled out. C State a 39-28 lead, 4.09 remaining as we approach the under four media timeout. Martin to Hewn. Hewn bouncing inside, Cantwell. He'll put one up off the glass. It misses and a late whistle will ring out. It'll bring us to the media timeout. We wait to see who the foul is on Cameron Chatwin. Four minutes even to go until halftime. Dixie State 39, Colorado Christian 28. Take the 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. A lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kick her. Kick her. Okay. I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kick her my sleeping bag. I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. There is a place where looking out means looking in. Where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever. 
where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is Hey, do you guys in the van have- Seeing is believing. There is a place. The Burns Arena, and during the timeout, the women's soccer team, the South Central Region champions, made that run to the NCAA Division II tournament. We're honored. They had the region trophy out there, and they got a nice standing ovation. What a year it was for the women's soccer squad. Yeah, if you'd have told me they were going to go to the lead eight before the season, I was, with the first year coach, I knew they had a good core and obviously a lot of returning players, but what a special run. They truly were the Cinderella stories and upset some really good teams along the way, lost to the eventual runners up. So, Great, great run for the women's soccer team. Hoffman misses the free throw. It was a one and one. Dixie State the other way. Layup rims off the, the iron. And here comes Colorado Christian. Here's Hewn. Hewn gives to Martin. Back to Hewn, left wing. Will bounce inside Hoffman. Working on Chatwin, and that's going to be a blocking foul. They're going to say no shot. A blocking foul Tough against call. Cameron Chatwin, and he absorbed all the contact, but maybe he was in the restricted area. Just wasn't set. Yeah. And then I had, didn't have the right position. Well, you can see he, he was moving. If he would have moved laterally, he would have been fine. But that one step in to Hoffman's where, where he got the call, but, you know, Great defense by Cameron Chapman. He started off on a front. He was in a full front, uh, prevented that entry pass, and then fought around the other way. So he was working extremely hard. That's a call as a coach you can live with because the guy's working really hard in the post. One and one for Hoffman. Missed the front end again. And Jacob Nichols the rebound for the Trailblazers. 323 until halftime. Dixie State leads by 11. 39-28. Staying handoff. To Youngblood. Youngblood dribbles through the leg, splits two defenders, slices and dices through the lane, and lays it up and in with the right hand. Love that move, and nice little kiss as he puts it home softly off the window. 41 28. Cantwell the answer. No, but it's tipped and put back in by Hoffman. And Hoffman's a load right now. He's playing well in this first half. He's making things difficult on the Dixie State Bigs. 11 points for Hoffman in the first half. Newbold for three right wing. It's short, but it falls into the hands of Stain. Frank puts it up with the right hand. It rims out. And a foul called against Jacob Nichols. Going for the loose ball. No, it's Newbold. My apologies, Jacob. Yeah, you can see Frank get a good look. Kind of trying to hang. Probably didn't need to hang that long. Probably lost a little bit of his rhythm. And, and then on that loose ball rebound, that's where the foul occurred. That'll put the Cougars on the line. Luke Martin, 62% on the season. First one on the way and in. It was the 10th team foul, so two free throws either way. And Colorado Christian, uh, you know, that's that's huge. You know, you got 240 left. You can get some freebies with the clock stop. Try to you gotta somehow on the road keep this single digits at the at the break. Dixie State, on the other hand, wants to try to push this thing up, get a little bit more of a comfortable lead. Second free throw is short. Youngblood the rebound, and then he's bumped on the way back up the floor by McKessie. Well, Devin, if you, you're exactly right, but you can't in return do the same thing and put Dixie State on the line on, on the other side. So, Especially in the open court out there near half court. Silly foul, no question. Back and forth. You know, it's interesting looking at the scoring column for the Trailblazers. We've got five. Youngblood have a chance here to get his... Fifth, so scoring five, five, six, five, six, five, five. Who do you uh, stop? Yeah, very, Talk very about balanced balance scoring. <laughs> That's as balanced as you're going to find it. Makes it hard to put an emphasis on, you know, shutting out one guy, but it seems like that's always the yeah. case. Coach John Judkins, you know, never has a guy scoring 25 a night. He's always got a guy at 16, 14, 13, 10, you know yep. what I mean? Just balanced up and down the roster. 43-31, Dixie State a 12-point lead. 225 remaining. Here's Oliver for the Cougars. Into the left corner, Hewn driving the baseline. Kicks it back out, McKessie. He'll drive inside. Right-handed layup is underneath the bottom of the backboard. Here come the Trailblazers. Youngblood kicks to the left corner. Wilson, pump fake. Defender flies by him. Three on the way. No offensive rebound. Stain 
Gives to Youngblood, kicks back to Andre, says have another try. Instead, Wilson will bounce inside to Newbold. His shot is off the mark. Ball is loose, and Frank Stain <laughs> fell to the floor. He's crawling after the it. bear crawl, They man. couldn't get to you. He was tripped up. Ball went out of bounds back to CCU. Stain was tripped up and just crawling that after was, the ball. He couldn't get to it. two days of football coming <laughs> flashback right there. And Josh Newbold, you watch his hustle by Josh Newbold. It <laughs> passes him, he dives. Great effort. And he's got a smile on his face the whole way. Saying, I thought I had that one. Showing coach, I'm hustling at every chance. Pagenkopf, it's called for a bump as McKessie goes inside. So two free throws. We've got our fair share of fouls. A combined 23 fouls called wow. here in the first half. Yeah, and that was, uh, I don't know that he impeded progress there. It was just a, a hand check foul or, or a little hip check there, but not much. We'll see it on replay. Kinda, Here's a bump. He kind of reached in a little bit. Yeah, any, anytime you get that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder yep. contact, it, officials are going to call that. They probably anticipate it more than anything. McKessie got both free throws to go. They both bounced all the way around the rim and fell through. 43-33, Dixie State by 10. 135 remaining. Nichols inside Newbold. Pump fake, goes up the next time and scores it right off the middle of the window. Nice. Newbold has four. Great for Josh, you know, these are huge minutes for him. Great opportunity to get his confidence going in a much needed bucket for Dixie State. Pagenkopf nearly had a steal, and he's called for a foul, and he's gotta be careful, kinda sh showing his displeasure, slapping the ball after the foul call. As he'll reach in, thought he had a clean swipe, and he's called for the foul, sending Elijah Oliver to the free throw line. First one good for Oliver. Andre Wilson right back into the game. Pagenkopf is out with the two fouls. That's the type of foul that in the film session tomorrow afternoon, Juddy's going to say, hey, that's you have the right idea, but you've got to slide yeah. your body over. Don't, don't reach. Slide over, maybe take a charge or make him dish it, but don't reach. Use your body to slide over and get in position. Oliver makes both free throws, and it's a 10-point lead again, 45-35 with 1.12 remaining until the half. Youngblood to the right side. They'll work it around the horn inside. Newbold reverse from left to right off balance and it's in. Are you kidding me? Newbold right there. That was fantastic, fellas. That was a great little reverse. 47-35. Dixie State a 12 point lead, 50 seconds remaining. Cougars with 18 to find a shot. Hune. Kicks it out to Oliver for three left wing. Rims out, and Jacob Nichols grabs the rebound. Hands off to Youngblood. Youngblood ahead to Newbold. He'll lay it up, missed it, left it short, and the Cougars have the rebound. Dickerson quickly up the floor to Hoffman. Blocked out of his hands, regains, and scores. And Dixie State will take a timeout. Coach Judkins. Use it or lose it timeout, plus he has Wants to talk to his guys and say, let's go. We've got to clean it up. It's a little sloppy out there. It's time to take a breath. I mean, that was up and back. I mean, th those guys in 44, I think it was at 44 seconds, there were one, two, three, five possessions. Very fast, up and down. Both teams just looking to push right now. And uh, you know, end of the half, guys are getting winded. He's Josh Newbold, he's been in for a little bit. So it's, it's still, you know, I'm surprised at the pace that Colorado Christian wants to play this game. It's, it's paying off for them, but... If you go back and watch their games, it's just slow it down yeah. and grind teams to death. But they are trying to run with Dixie State. Yeah, and right now, I mean, Bill was shooting pretty lopsided, really. Dixie State, 47%, what, 35% for the Cougars. And yeah, still a 10-point advantage, but but Cougars are kind of hanging yeah. around right now and keeping it within striking distance. 24.4 seconds remaining. Dixie State with the possession and a 10-point lead. Shot clock is off. And Dixie State will play for one here. Juddy wants players to yeah. swap sides of the that, floor here. Here we go into action. To Wilson, right wing with nine. To Newbold, free throw line with six. Bouncing in Nichols with five. Couple of dribbles. An offensive foul. A turnover, and Dixie State won't even get a shot up. I had a kick out too there, but I think he was intent on trying to, you know, find a way to turn around and score. And Hoffman's just, 
He's a big man right there and using the baseline to his advantage. But here's Dickerson with one. The shot at the buzzer. No, it'll rim out. I think it would have counted if it went. I agree. Yeah, he I got up the off. floor quickly and missed it from the free throw line. Dixie State a 47-37 lead as we transition quickly into our, our, our halftime show. Uh, Trailblazers a 47-37 advantage. And, and guys, quick hitter thoughts before we look at some highlights and before we uh, break this thing down and go to our Seven Oaks Schoolers halftime report. Love the tempo. I mean, you know, like the fact that she stays trying to pound the post. A couple possessions, you could you could argue that, hey, maybe, maybe kick that back out, establish that low block, and then get that reposition, go back in, or get it outside to an open three-point shooter. Dixie State didn't really shoot the three as well as you'd like there, but that wasn't for lack of good shot selection. And so if those start falling, uh, that'll help them tremendously. Only hit a couple in that first half, but uh, impressed with Colorado Christian's effort in the first half on the road. Thought they really brought the energy, kind of got to bring it and kind of fire each other up. They don't have a lot of fan support here tonight. They're well coached, but uh, cozy lead for Dixie State at the break. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. A lot of them. Trailblazers put up 47 points in the first half. And uh, Pagankoff inside of Jared Green. Green scoring it off the window. And we've got an early candidate for catering right, right here, the wraparound pass into Hunter Schofield, an early candidate for a catering concepts play of the game. Pagankoff a steal. And then in transition, getting the and one, the bucket and the foul. Jack Pagankoff was really active early. Frank staying the steal. Dishing off the Jack. Jack getting inside and laying it up. And these are, these are like the Jack Pagankoff yep. highlight reel. And then Jacob Nichols, he came in and, yep. and what a spurt. The and one, then hit another shot. A great first half for Jacob Nichols. Yeah. Big minutes. Yeah, five points and four assists, I think it was, for yep. him. Cameron Chatwin getting involved, knocking into three. There's just so many guys on the Dixie State squad that can score. Jared Green, again, getting inside the offensive rebound and the putback. The Trailblazers. Just relentless inside. If you knock the ball out of their hands the first time, they'll go back and score it. Andre Wilson came in. He knocked in a Mountain America three-pointer. He had a couple buckets in the first half. Pagankoff. Look at the hustle by Nichols. Yes, Nichols to Stain. He had seven points in the first half. And huge for him to get his yes. confidence up after a little bit of a drought scoring the basketball. And love this play by Andre Wilson right there. Goes to the finger roll, beats everybody with a little blow by and a nice finish. Newbold getting in the action, Woo. the reverse layup late, up and under from left to right. And you can see the State emphasis. is so good, let's look at it twice. Yeah, you can see the emphasis Dixie State had there to attack the rim and then pound the post. But you saw a couple outside jumpers fall as well. So I like the game plan for Dixie State. Not probably executed as perfectly as Coach Judkins would like, but still a 10-point lead at the break. Trailblazers by 10 at the break, 47-37. Let's take the full halftime timeout, a five-minute break, and come back. We'll break it down. We'll give you the numbers and uh, give you what Dixie State needs to do in the second half to finish the win. Five-minute timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared, and everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to Division One. Here we go in transition, and he throws it down with one hand. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics because this is our team. Radio Dixie 91.3, Young the Giant, something to believe in. John, what song do you want to hear? Next, Miss Calendris. Uh, 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 team, the best one team. Uh, uh, just fantastic uh, situation. Uh, I should talk to you. I was going to talk to you last time. Uh,
When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on. Tell me not, in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not as they seem. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Lives of great men all remind us that our lives can be sublime, and departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing over life's solemn moon, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing, shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate. Still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. Dixie State a 47-37 lead at the half. We welcome you back inside the halftime show. On the radio side brought to you by Fabulous Freddy's. On the TV side brought to you by uh, Seven Oaks Jewelers and uh, the, the Trailblazers. Off to a 10-point lead, and you, you, know, you felt like you know probably could have been more, but Colorado Christian putting in a big effort. I mean, you had Ingerser coming in, hitting you know, a bunch of shots from the field. He's got 11 points, and, and that's kind of the difference in, in this game. Without that, without that hot shooting, you know, Dixie State would be pushing the 20-point lead mark. But, uh, you know, credit Colorado Christian for coming in. They're trying to match Dixie State's tempo. We'll see if they can keep it up in the second half. But it's a 10-point game right now, and right now this game is far from over. Yeah, I thought there was two players, and you mentioned one of them that really played well in that first half. And I thought the other player outside of Justin Ingeser was Spencer Hoffman. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, talking with Coach Judkins in the film study they did on him, they were very impressed at his development from last year to this year, and uh, he's fill, he's filling up that body. He's that a talent. one rebound away from a double double already. Yeah, yeah, five of seven from the floor, decent from the line. You know, three out of five, nine boards, thirteen points. Uh, did have two turnovers, but when you're going to have these guys, you know, trying to block shots and reaching and grabbing, and you're fighting for for rebounds, you're going to have a couple mistakes there, but. I thought he played tremendous, all within the framework of the offense. And and Ingerser never really heat checked either. You know, hit those three threes in a matter of about a five minute stretch, mm -hmm. but but he didn't push the issue. I, you know, I thought maybe they went away from him a little bit too much and should have got him some more set plays. I know Dixie State did a better job adjusting to him defensively, so that'll be the the coaching chess match, and we'll see what kind of adjustments they make. Uh, it's hard to. It's hard to analyze who to try to slow down for Dixie State, though, at the break because, Carrick, you've got 
four guys with six points. You got, you know, four more guys that have five points. I mean, talk about a, a first half where everybody's kind of just doing their part. Well, in the first half, ten guys played for Dixie State. Yep. Nine of them scored. And, and the lowest scoring about it is three. And it's like Mike, like you were saying, and like Mike was saying before the break, I mean, you, you go down the stat sheet, six, five, six, five, six, five, five, zero, six, three. Yeah. And, and this this whole Dixie State team is contributing, and that's what's so dangerous about this Trailblazer team is it's not just one guy scoring 20 points a night. I mean, it's everybody getting involved in the offense, and you look at the re you know, rebounding is almost the same way. 3 5 3 4 1 2 2 0 1 2 1. I mean, everybody's doing everything to try to, to be a part of this effort and, and to try to help the Trailblazers, and that's what Coach Judkins wants them to do exactly. Only six turnovers in the first half. You can keep that to, you know, four or less. You won't go over ten uh, turnovers for the uh, the game. You're at five steals and uh, 17 points off of those steals that's and off impressive. of turnovers. 24 points in the paint. Ten points getting out in the fast break. And how about that? 19 bench points for Dixie State in the first half. 19 to eight. So you look at some of those specialty stats. And, I mean, all in all, a pretty good half for Dixie State in the first half until you look up and you see a 10 point, only a 10 point lead. Colorado Christian's doing what they need to do to hang in there. Yeah, and the rebounding was really even, a one point advantage for Dixie State. And if you're Coach Hironaka, Mike, I, I don't know who you try to slow down because everybody just, like we were talking about, just doing their job right now for the Trailblazers. So I guess maybe he tries to defend the post a little bit differently no matter who's down there for Dixie State because that's what they really emphasize, they're pounding that paint. Yeah, well, you know that's an emphasis. The last five minutes of the half, he started switching every screen. He started to realize, hey, we can guard them, you know, if we switch. You, it's okay to switch, guard big, big guard, it doesn't matter. He was switching every screen, and it kind of worked a little bit. The problem is, is he probably gave Coach Judkins enough time to go in at halftime and say, hey, guys, we're switching screens, and this is how we're going to address it. So you're right, it's hard to identify who to stop, but I think as – as a team, collectively, they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. If they can get back in transition, that really slows Dixie down. So if they can push it and Dixie just keep running and running and running, that's exactly what they need to do to extend on this 10-point lead. Yeah, Dixie State shot 47% from the field, 33% from downtown, 12 of 16, pretty solid there from the foul line, 75%. Uh, you look at the, the shooting numbers there for Colorado Christian, 34%, 12 out of 35 from the field, just three out of 11 from downtown, that's 27%. And then they were 10 of 13, 76% from the free throw line. And I'm sure Juddy uh, pleased with the 10 point lead, but not nearly satisfied because that was not a perfect half. They did have six turnovers, not a bad number there at the break, forced Colorado Christian into eight turnovers in half number one. I think one area that Coach Yudkins is going to be very pleased with is communication. His guys were, were really talking and, and very vocal with each other, and I think that, that helps. We've got a great crowd. It's getting a little bit loud. Those guys are communicating at a very high level. You know, Defensively, they're doing a very good job of, of getting back and, and matching up. Uh, he's got to love their communication and overall team effort. You know, it's interesting. Jack got off to that quick start, you know, had a quick five points. Didn't score for about 18 minutes after that, but, but yet still three assists. Uh, four rebounds, had a steal, did have two turnovers and got those two personal fouls. But, you know, I, I think Jack, of all the people Juddy has emphasized the most, don't try to do too much. And I don't think Jack did in that first half. I, I thought other than on the defensive end where he got those fouls, trying to do a little bit too much and get a, get a steal there. But those are fouls you'll live with if yeah. you're Coach Judkins. Yeah. Coach Judkins wants him to make plays, and Jack knows he's got to be that playmaker. And that doesn't include scoring all the time. You know, finding guys, get them going in their rhythm. I guarantee you, Coach Judkins had a conversation with Jack sometime this week saying, hey, we got to get our freshman going. You know, get him some good looks. Create some offense for Frank. Because if his game takes off and he starts scoring again, it's going to open up things for Jack. So point guard doing exactly what Coach needs him to do. Just be balanced. Run the floor. Be the general and be that extension of Coach Judkins on the floor. Of course, Trailblazers took almost the entire 20 minutes in, in the locker room, 15 minutes in the locker room, came out with just about a minute to spare. They'll try to get some shots and some layups up. But and Coach we'll never Judkins, know what Coach we'll Judkins said. We'll never well, know. Mike, never, Mike, Mike, Mike. I mean, we have an idea, it. you know. Well, I mean, hold, holding, them repeat to, it. <laughs> holding them to 37 points, he's, he's got to be happy with that. But like I said, yeah. when they started switching their screens the last five minutes of the half, I'm sure that was – 
strategy for Coach Judkins to just draw some things up and talk about some offensive yep. adjustments that need to be made. Dixie State a 47-37 lead as we get set for the second half. Appreciate you tuning in and listening, whether it's uh, radio, ESPN Radio 97.7 FM, or if it's uh, TV, CEC TV, TDS Cable Channel 108, or on the Dixie State Stretch Internet Portal online. Appreciate wherever you're listening or, or watching this game from, making us part of your night. Carrick Stegmiller, Devin Dixon, Mike Olson with you inside the Burns Arena. Both teams go back to the original starting five for Dixie State, Pagenkopf, Youngblood, Stain, Schofield, Green. For the Cougars, Cantwell, Ingeser, Martin, Hoffman, Dickerson. And Dixie State will have the first possession of the second half, now moving left to right across your radio dime. Pagan Kopp to the right side, Stain will bounce baseline right. Schofield. Schofield now has it left elbow, puts it on the floor. It's inside, off the window and in. Too like easy they, for Hunter Schofield. I like how they took a baseline all the way to the left wing and then got it back to Hunter. Really nice start for the Trailblazers. Coach Yuck is wanted to see, are they going to keep switching? Let's move it side to side and see where they're at defensively. 49-37, 12 point advantage for Dixie State. And they make a run and extend this lead. Got to get stops defensively. Engeser, he's got 11 points, made three threes in the first half. Five to shoot, free throw line, Dickerson. Inside, back to Hoffman with two on the shot clock and a jumper from the left side is up and in for Spencer Hoffman. He's got 15. He's got 15, but you know what? I'd rather have him shoot mid-range jumpers than those easy putbacks in the paint. Pagenkopf behind the back dribble, then pulls up for a jumper and missed it. CCU the rebound. Ingeser wanted to step back three, but a good closeout from Stain. They work it back around. Here's Hoffman holding. Out to Ingeser, and it's knocked out of bounds. For a minute, you thought Stain knocked it off of Ingeser. I did. Yeah, For, I, uh, live, it looked almost like he touched it last. And take a look at the replay to see. Tough from that angle. Back in play we go. Dickerson will lob. Missed it. Schofield the rebound. Pagenkopf trying to thread a pass down to Youngblood, and it's tipped out of bounds. Right idea, but the defense was right there to kind of get in that passing lane and poke it away. Trailers have to reset. If Jack had held a little longer, maybe could have went to the bounce pass. And they go a lob play off the inbounds pass, and it's tipped taken away. Youngblood had been looking for Schofield. Ingeser to Martin for CCU. Fakes a pass and then lays it up and in. Luke Martin, his first field goal of the night. He's got three points, and it's an eight-point game again, 49-41. Yeah, Martin, though, with a nice hard cut right down the key and an easy laying. Youngblood will lob into Schofield. A little too much on the pass. Hunter has to chase it down, backs his way back in. It's knocked out of bounds. And Dixie State will maintain. Hunter Warm. Schofield felt like he was hit across the arm as he gathered himself to go up, but no call. 12 to shoot for Dixie State. 18.04 remaining. Second half, Youngblood to trigger baseline right to Schofield. They leave him wide open, and he airballs a shot from the right elbow. Out of bounds. Something looked drastically yeah. wrong. As soon as it left his hand, you knew there was something he wrong was, with it. As soon as it came out, he was chasing it. Yeah, it, it wasn't And spinning. he couldn't get to it quick enough. It, it was spinning. He shot a knuckleball. Right. Yeah, it was. That's like me when I got a little four-foot putt. You know you should make it, but you, you just, you're wide too open. easy, and you just don't, right? How often do you get a four-foot putt? Not very often. That's right. I get a four-foot putt after I putt three other times. 49-41, <laughs> Martin inside. He runs over Schofield. Did he have position? They say no, he didn't. Schofield will pick up the foul, and free throws coming for Luke Martin. Didn't do much in the first half, but he's been aggressive in the early going in the second. Yeah, and Ingeser hasn't came out and looked to really score. He's just kind of continuing to run the offense, and... Hoffman got that early bucket, that, and they look like uh, they're not going anywhere. We've got to have to go to replay here on this foul. Yeah, not sure what exactly they're looking at, unless they're looking at, you know, whether or not he was in the restricted area. I don't know. we got an official replay going. Dixie State at 49-41 lead, and we'll take this time to take a look ahead. Dixie State will host Regis tomorrow night. And this, uh, the first game tonight of a four-game homestand, host Regis tomorrow night. And then uh, next weekend, the big weekend with uh, the 
the rival Colorado Mesa well, and in town and then Western Colorado. Really important homestand too because you look at February and uh, just a couple home games yeah. on that slate. So, you know, get out here if you're not here tonight. See Trailblazers take on Regis tomorrow night. And then, yeah, I mean, kind of kind of that rivalry game with Mesa next week. Really important one for the women too because the other you know, one of the teams to beat in the, in the conference on, in the RMAC. So, uh, but they're, they're definitely taking a look at something here and officials right in front of us checking to see if this is uh, a flagrant. Oh, the elbow. The left elbow of Martin caught Schofield. And they're going to review it. They're yeah, going to they talk re among each yeah. other. I don't think I that was malicious. I don't no. think I think it was all within just the, the framework of the game. Yeah, it, absolutely. He's a right-handed I mean, shooter, and he got him with his left arm, right? So he's going into his shot with his left arm. So yep. uh, doesn't look any anything yeah. outside of a normal basketball play. Well, it's unfortunate they, he got an elbow in the face. They might have been looking at, was that on the shot or the floor, too, at the same token? Uh, I think it came before he was and shooting. That, yeah. It just, just heard the officials say to Coach Judkins, no flagrant. There was no movement of the elbows from side to side or other. it just was the natural like you said Mike the natural movement of the plane everyone's laughing at me in the table now. I, I talk with my hands you were doing a great job of landing that plane like I'm confident that if the 747 came into Burns <laughs> Arena you could land it perfectly I want to see you fly that, a drone that was exactly <laughs> what the ref I made the same motion that the referee did <laughs> I talk with my hands as well so you're not alone it's like a Madonna Vogue music video <laughs> Oh my goodness! How do you re how do you uh, bounce back from that? Hey, you get Madonna comparisons. I don't know that's necessarily it, a bad it. thing. <laughs> take it. Both free throws were missed. Dixie State the other way. Paganikoff trying to bounce a pass to Jared Green. It's kicked out of bounds or knocked out of bounds. 13 seconds on the shot clock. 17:25 remaining. That is the first Madonna comparison I've ever drawn in my 33 years of life. Vogue, Vogue. <laughs> how many of our listeners are googling Vogue video? Hopefully none. We got an eight-point game. <laughs> That's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Dixie State not able to get the layup to go. And a jump ball called afterward. The arrow goes to Colorado Christian. Yeah, and I like their intensity so far. Yep. You know, both teams, only only six total points scored here in nearly three minutes of the second half. So both teams' defensive efforts are solid. Cantwell to Ingeser. That's who I would get a look for is Ingeser. Yeah, he's got yeah, he is. No field goal attempts through the first three minutes. Cantwell into the lane. Spinning. A floater rims out. Cameron Chatwin the rebound. He'll hand off to Pagankoff. Crossing over to his left. Stops. Skip pass to the right wing. And Youngblood, top of the key. Chatwin, three ball on the way. And nothing but the bottom of the net. And really good extra pass to get it back. Jack then hits the corner. Then straight away, kind of trailing the play. Chatwin buries the triple. 52-41. Ingeser to answer. Missed it, his first three-point miss of the night. Dixie State the rebound. Quickly in transition, Green lays it up and in. He wanted to dunk, but it was knocked out of his hands. He gathered and laid it in, and a timeout call by Coach Hironaka. Dixie State a 54-41 lead, 16-22 to go. It's the first coach's called timeout of the half, so they'll stretch it to a full timeout. We'll take the 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a wonders. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. I got you right where I want you. If I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Sixteen twenty-two to go. Dixie State a 54-41 lead. Yeah, just just like that, Dixie State kind of put the pedal down a little bit there. That 
That three by three by Chatwin always helps, though. He kind of pushed that lead up. I think largest lead of the night all of a sudden. 13 points, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, same spot he hit the one in the first half. That's definitely his spot. Yeah, during the break, they had to check and make sure he was behind the line. He was. And a 13-point lead. Trailblazers, four for 10 from beyond the arc tonight. Three-pointers brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Lob into Hoffman, guarded by Green. Missed a close one. Well, that's the shot. The rebound. That's the shot they want. Hoffman in deep. Just missed the baby hook. Woo! Chatwin inside. Took a feed and couldn't get it to go. And then a whistle and a foul against Jared Green. Trying to pick up the loose ball afterward. That's a a back flip pass on a bounce from Frank Stain that is just perfect. Cameron. Chatwin's got to finish that. He could have dunked it. You know, he, he definitely, and he wants that one back. You can see his body language. He's talking to himself. He wants that one back so badly. And now we come to the under-16 media timeout. 15.48 to go. Dixie State 54, Colorado Christian 41. Back in a minute on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Fifteen forty-eight to go. Dixie State a 54-41 lead. And the Trailblazers couldn't score. Jared Green picked up the foul. And the last field goal for Dixie State was still the Cameron Chatwin three-point shot straight ahead. And Colorado Christian with possession out of the timeout. Trailblazers showing full court pressure here. Dickerson catches in between two defenders. And Coach Judkins even yells out, you got to get that. The two white jerseys right there. Neither of them can get the ball. Ingeser, three-point land straight away, guarded by Frank Stain. Crosses over to his right. Fakes the spin back to the left. Hands back off to Cantwell. Cantwell whips it back. A pick and pop. Ingeser knocks it in for three. And that, that's one of his specialties. The pick, the pop, knocks it in. Yeah, and Frank Stain thought he was going to switch, and they didn't. And that left him wide open. Ten-point game. 54-44. 15-15 to go. Chatwin to the free throw line. Rattles around and falls off the front of the rim. CCU Chat. the rebound. Chat's assertive tonight. He wants to score, but just not finding the range there in that mid-range J. Time ticking by. Five minutes gone in the second half. Martin trying to cross it through the lane to Ingeser, and it's stolen away. Dixie State the other way. Youngblood leads for Pagan Koff, and he lays it up and in. He's got seven. Yeah, Jason timed it perfectly. I mean, yep. kept it long enough, but gave it up just in time where Jack had the easy land. Here comes Dickerson across the timeline out of Cantwell. And, and stolen there, but what are they calling here? Cameron? And a steal by Cameron Chatwell. Yeah, and he's going to get called for foul. Did he hold him, wrap him? I mean, that was interesting. I don't so see a lot there, guys. Jumped in front of him. I mean, both players went around him. Both players have a right to the ball. Well, Hoffman just kind of was flat-footed yeah, waiting for the going. entry, and yeah. Cameron just went and cut it off. I don't understand that whistle. And a lob all the way back to the timeline to Hoffman. And reset. 14-25 to go. 56-45-44 lead for the Trailblazers. Into the corner, Martin for three. No, Pagankoff the rebound. And he wants to push it now. Pagankoff into the corner. Andre Wilson skipping it over to Leighton Parker for three. And he left it short. 
And it bounces out of bounds, and Cameron Chatwin got to it, but he was out of bounds. When Jack grabs the rebound, good things happen. He gets all the way to the middle. They push him out of the middle. Two passes later, open three by Layton Parker. It just didn't come out of his hand right, guys. Yeah. You love that relay there with Andre Wilson to, to get it to the other side. Those two played well together. Dickerson for three left corner for CCU. Too much on it. And Andre Wilson the rebound for the Trailblazers. And then an offensive foul will be a moving screen against Cameron Chatwin. As he picks fourth. up a couple quick ones. And he's got four. Hunter Schofield will check in for him. He wasn't moving. He was completely set. And as he walked off the floor, Coach Judkins gave him a pat on the butt and said, hey, you did exactly what you were supposed to. So still don't know what that whistle was about either. Maybe he caught him on the blind side. I mean, you have to, the defender has to see you coming maybe is what he was thinking. But a great screen there by Cameron Chatwin. Yeah, but didn't show up the officials. Just kind of walked off the floor. Yeah, made a little expression there, but nothing demonstrative and just went to the bench. Angus call, though. to Oliver. Jump step, trying to kick to the corner. Hey. Oliver but there. The teammate the, was gone. Yeah, he's trying to back to the bench. Yeah, and, and Oliver left his feet, right? When you leave your feet. Trouble. Yep. It, you know, it's, yeah, no, nothing usually good happens in that situation. And it was for goalie that was in the corner and then made his move. Full court pressure by the Cougars. Inbound pass to Nichols, and it's knocked out of bounds off of Jacob's leg. And a turnover back to CCU. Yeah, they had to hurry to get it in. I think the five count was coming, right? Yep. And Jack had fell, fall, fallen down, and that kind of disrupted everything. And another turnover there. Nichols was double teamed. For goalie. The throw in from the corner. He'll find Jaden Michael. Michael hesitates, drives inside now, and Wilson spins back to the left and lays it in easily. And he's athletic. I mean, just a nice spin move to get right to the front of the rim. Easy bucket. Back to a 10-point deficit. And a whistle and a foul. They start to tighten things up here. As Pagankoff was bumped on the way up the floor by Oliver. This team does not look like a 1-14, 1-8 Armac team. I mean, they're, no, they they're don't. a good team, very balanced, and, and they do some very good things offensively and defensively. Schofield working inside on Hoffman. And he can't get it to go. What a look. Nichols. Had a shot at the offensive rebound. Couldn't quite pull it down, and here comes CCU. Oliver into the lane. Shot blocked by Jacob Nichols. And Jacob comes down with it. And Pagankoff is fouled on the way back up the floor. It's definitely a, a slower tempo in the second half than we saw for a good portion of the first half. And I'm not sure, you know, if that's by design, I, I mean, I'm sure that Colorado Christian would rather slow things down. They're on the road. They got to travel up and play Westminster tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully it's not snowing like it was earlier today. Schofield to Nichols. Nichols trying to no-look bounce pass back to Schofield. It's tapped out of bounds. Dixie State with it. 17 to shoot. 12.39 on the game clock. 56-46. Dixie State a 10-point lead. Just joining us, that's right about where it's been the whole game. Nichols has it knocked out of his hands, into the hands of Hoffman, and then Jacob's going to get called for a foul, trying to tie the ball up. And Nichols and frustrated. He's upset. He, feel, he felt like he got fouled on the way in there. Nichols brings a lot right of there, energy. there, got hit on the arm a couple different times. Yeah, if you're just joining us, Dixie State, his biggest lead has been 13 tonight. And every time they try to make a little bit of run, Colorado Christian keeps it close. And I think the last lead was, what, 12-11 12 11, for 11, yeah. Colorado Christian? Uh -huh. For goalie. Loses it, trying to cross over on Pagankoff. It squirts out. And whistles. And the foul is going to go against for goalie. And Pagankoff got up like he got poked in the eye or something. And he tries to go through. Oh, they the bonked heads. Yeah. When he went through the legs, it just got away from him and then turned into a rugby scrum a little bit of us, you know, heads bonking, bodies flying. Yeah. And the whistles keep coming, and guys. They keep coming. Another foul on Fergoli before the inbounds pass. That's the fourth team foul now against Colorado Christian. Third on him. A pass inside to Parker. Trying to break the press. 
They'll get it to Pagan Koff. Now Colorado Christian will back into the half court defense. Cougars playing a man-to-man -man right now, as they do most of the time. Wilson, the Schofield lobbing into Green. Catches, can't score, but he's fouled by Engeser. And that'll bring us to the media timeout. 12 minutes remaining, Dixie State 56, Colorado Christian 46. We take the 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Marcus. Six forty-six. Trailblazers a ten-point advantage, and it's just been a night where or Dixie State's led for twenty-five minutes and forty-eight seconds. CCU's only led for forty-seven seconds, but it still has not quite felt like a game where you feel like Dixie State is in enough control that you can sit back and relax. No, not at all. And with with guys, you know, like uh, Justin Engeser, you know, I mean, he he gets hot real quick. You know, he, he can put some points on the board real fast. So, no, I mean, a 10-point lead uh, is not big enough uh, for Dixie State right now. Jared Green makes the first free throw. Out of the timeout. He'll have one more. Second one rattles out, and Michael the rebound for CCU. And Jared Green having a, just kind of one of those quiet, nice nights, up to nine points. Played well. There's Ingeser for goalie. Right wing, 10 to shoot. Colorado Christian inside. Michael, right hand layup, no. Jack Pagankoff the rebound. Great switch to the zone there that kind of gave Colorado Christian some trouble. Pick and roll, Green inside, takes the dish from Wilson, and he lays it up and in. Jared Green has got 11. Textbook pick and roll. Textbook. Great screen, great angle, perfect pass. Uh, that's exactly how you run a pick and roll. And I like how he took the contact before he shot it. Could have got an and one, honestly. And a turnover. They look inside to Hodge, but he wasn't ready for the pass. It went off his fingertips and out of bounds. And, uh, and right now, you know, we talked about four players with six points and four players with five points at halftime. Joe Green right now might be your leading candidate for the player of the game. Yeah. He has just kind of done his job steady Eddie all night long. He has, and he's got a tough guard on the other end, you know, guarding Hoffman. Uh, he, he's done a good job. Hoffman's got 15 points, but it, it's been a battle. You know, it, it takes a lot out of you when you're guarding somebody that big and physical, and then to come down on the offensive end, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a great suggestion, Devin, as a player of the game. Back in play we go after a CCU foul was called against Fregoli. It was his fourth. He's out of the game now. Dickerson back in. Green to Leighton Parker. Parker drives in. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound and scores it the second time around. And one. And Coach Judkins a little hop of joy <laughs> after the bucket. That could be a yeah, we did. for playing the game right there. That was graceful. You're talking about the, the hop? A nice little hop. Did anybody get that? Well, kind of the cameras. It was kind of hanging on the rim. And Leighton Parker, I love how he got Hodges up in the air. And it takes the contact and one opportunity for the youngster out of Bingham High School. Timeout called. It's just a 30, so we keep it right here. At 10.45 remaining, 61-46. Dixie State a game-high lead of 14. And Parker will have a free throw after the timeout to try to make it a 15-point game. You feel like now's the time, Dixie State, to try to go 
on a run and try to seal the deal as we get a little bit later in this one. Well, it's all about momentum now. I mean, it's 10, 10 minutes, 45 seconds. You've got the home crowd behind you. This is where you put them away. This has to be the moment where you extend the lead in the next four minutes uh, that the game gets too far out of reach. You can't let them chip into this lead right here. It's huge. Here, here's your little they, they dance got the hop. Juddy. Graceful. I think he traveled. <laughs> he traveled. P pivot foot. The free throw is good. Oh, that's incredible. That, that could be our leading candidate for catering concepts play of the game. The and one. I, I love it. I love it because you see the he's kind of leaning as he misses the first. He gets the rebound and he scores and then he little little hop. He's been doing that Blanco Brown <laughs> two step. <laughs> 62-46, 60 State a 16 point lead, 10-30 remaining. Ingeser. Shout out to the CEC TV crew for getting us that shot. Inside of Hodge, and he'll spin to the baseline and float it off the window and in. That's not a shot you want to give up when you're playing the zone. I mean, that, that, it was too easy of an entry pass and not against the 2-3 zone. Jared Green to the left side. And Youngblood trying to go pick and roll. The pass is kicked. Bounce success. State will have it back. Bounce success with that pick and roll last time. Went right back to it. Uh, great idea. Just couldn't thread the needle. Andre Wilson to trigger. Left side to Schofield. Lobbing to Jared Green. Pump fake. And he is hammered from behind. And he's got all of his teammates there to surround him and make sure that he's okay as he was hammered by Christian Hodge. That was a tough, hard foul. I mean, Jared Green with a great pump fake. Got him up in the air, but then coming down, just really took the big guy down. He's, he's having a hard time. He got up on his own. He's walking very gingerly to the free throw line. But you can see that high-low pass. Great catch, great pump fake, but then he took all of that, the weight there from Hodge and uh, you know, holding his back a little bit. That's, that's going to be a painful oh, injury. They're calling a flagrant one right off the bat without even looking at the video on Christian Hodge. And I was, and then they are, are going to look at it. I was just going to say, Cameron Chatwin got called for a, a, a flagrant yeah. in, the, in the game against Colorado School of Mines that was a, a similar play minus the pump fake that he was chasing down the Colorado School of Mines defender. And he was called, I literally was just, the, the words were on the tip of my tongue to say that, you know, if Cameron Chatwin got called for a flagrant a couple of weeks ago, then, then this is a similar play. And, and, they're looking at the tape right now. Well, the call on the court is a flagrant foul. We, we heard yeah. them talking about it as a flagrant foul. They're looking and to see if it needs to be upgraded. Uh, but you can see that that's a it's a very hard foul. It's hard. Is it a play on the ball? I think that's what they're looking at. Did he just come down with both hands uh, maliciously to catch his head? But I mean, he just bent backwards, awkward. That, yeah, that's, and that's it just it looks game. worse. And 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 we'll let them make the decision. And I. In that, in that situation, I don't know what different you want Christian Hodge to do. Yeah. You know, you don't want to hurt Green or any more, get your legs taken out and fall and, and hurt yourself. But when it was a play on the ball. Yeah, he Jeff got Green. his hands on the ball. Yeah, and the officials uh, taking a look right yeah. here. And they're taking a long look, guys, because I don't know that this is clear cut. No, it's not. Yeah. No, the, the good thing is, is it, it allows – Jared Green kind of walked that off and then get some work done on his back. He's, he's going to go shoot the free throws. Right now he's a leading scorer, so you want to keep him in the game. That's 9.58 to go. So uh, hopefully Jared Green's able to go to the free throw line and, and go to the free throw. And I like what the officials do here. You know, one doesn't go look at it. The other two do. Each that saw the video, they say yep. what they saw. And then you kind of got the mediator that kind of maybe agrees one way or the other. Yeah. And then uh, as a group, you go ahead and make the call. And it looks like we're about to get what that call will be we'll see what they they do here we'll kind of try to and it sounds like they're going to keep the the flagrant one and i and i think it's all when, in, in today's day and age of of replay reviews it, it's all about what's called on the court initially oh, yeah. and and you've and seen I, that i think if they had just called a common foul it would have stayed i think it stayed foul. a common foul yeah but i think there wasn't, you know, and I don't, I don't necessarily anything. love yeah. that, though, no. because yeah. I felt like maybe I leaned that was a common foul yeah. over uh, a flag. And, and I'm with you on that one, too. 
you know, and you see it, at the, the, you know, see it in the national championship of Clemson and LSU the other night. You see it in the NFL playoffs where they, they do. They stick with the call and replay nine times a ten. Well, why even have a replay? I about, mean, about the Rudy Gobert challenge last night, yeah. and if you see that one, yeah, that's right. the foul in New Orleans. Yeah. Speaking well, of replays, and how much of that call was based on the reaction and the injury? You know, I mean, Jared Green went down pretty hard. He was holding his back, and you know, it, initially officials are in their mind are going to be thinking, you know, what happened to cause that kind of injury? So, uh, I really think that that's part of it. So Green will make both free throws, and Dixie State has the possession. This could be a four-point possession here for Dixie State with a 16-point lead already at 64-48. Youngblood, right wing, short, rebound to Cantwell. Pass ahead to Dickerson. 9.38 remaining. Dickerson. Three-point land left side. Holding, looking into Hoffman, but a good front by Green to discourage that pass. Oliver now, right wing. Touch pass into the corner, Cantwell to Ingerson. Closely guarded by Wilson, skip it into the left corner. Dickerson, catch and shoot three, clings off the front iron, right back to Dickerson. He gets a shot off the window, and he's fouled by Leighton Parker. So frustrating to play defense that well for that long. For that long. And give up an offensive rebound to uh, a point guard. And rebounding really close. It was one yeah. point advantage at the half for Dixie State. It's still right there, one point advantage for Dixie State. And Dickerson to the line. Dickerson misses the first free throw. He's got a little Stoudemire in him, you know, a little left-handed guard, really quick. Certainly a foul there from the backside, and the reach in by Parker. Easy call to make. At least he stays lucky that it didn't go in. Makes the second. Dickerson with five points on the night, and it's a 15-point game. 64-49, 9-10 remaining. Parker. A lob inside of Jared Green. Green to Schofield. Jumper right side. You bet. Yeah, kind of quiet scoring night for, for Hunter. Just now four for 10 from the field, I think. Actually, yeah, four, four for, for 11. 11. But that was pretty in rhythm, knocking down that mid-range J. 66-49, 848 remaining. Cantwell into the left corner. Dickerson will try a three again from that spot, and this time he knocks it in. Dickerson with eight. And they needed that to try to keep it within striking distance. Not looking good for the Cougars right now, but that helped a little bit. Wilson across the timeline. 66-52 Dixie State lead. Andre will get inside and lay it up and in. And I love how he... Forced the big man there, Hoffman, to come out just enough to when he got past him and held on to it long enough, it was an easy lay-in. Good ball control in the air with the body by Wilson. 68-52. Trailblazers by 16. Cantwell traveled. Frank Stain will check in. And it'll bring us to the under eight media timeout. And here late in the season, guys, we're, we're trying something a little different. Uh, rather than, than waiting into the postgame show when less people are watching and, and into the game, we're gonna, and I know there's still eight minutes left in this game, but let's go ahead. We're going to name a SkyWest Airlines player of the game. And it gives us some time to kind of talk about it. You know, you and I, we're, we're talking about it. It's, it's a tough night to name that player of the game because so many people have contributed. However, Jared Green, he's four for five for the field. Five for six from the free throw line. He's got three rebounds. He's got a tough guard on, on the one end. Um, but like we've said, he's two points away from his career high of 15. Right now, I'm leaning toward Jerry Green. Yeah, I mean, this is just his sixth start. And uh, Coach Judkins, when I talked to him earlier today, called him really raw. Well, he's looking a little bit more polished tonight. Yeah. And I, I'm going to agree with you. It's still a long way to go. But his body positioning, uh, the way that he's able to use his frame to maneuver inside and make plays and shoot the ball efficiently, uh, you know, grabbing rebounds, going right back up and strong plays like this is right now, I, I think he has clearly been your most valuable player tonight. The big man really making hay. Absolutely. Very efficient minutes. He's played 14 minutes and he scored 13 points, but more importantly, he has held Hoffman scoreless the second half. So he's done a great job defensively. Uh, really stepped up and, and, and played some quality minutes for Dixie State as a freshman. I, I, I certainly agree that he's he's a player of the game tonight. 
There you go, SkyWest Airlines player of the game is Jared Green. And of course, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on that through the, uh, the rest of the night. 6'8", junior, grew up Blackfoot, Idaho, North Idaho Community College transfer. I, I still think he's got a lot more potential to flourish under Coach Jones. Oh, yeah. Kind of like we saw with Julian Decree his senior season. Yeah. Young blood into the corner. Wilson, catch and shoot on the way, and it's money. Splashes it home. Andre Wilson has been coming on late and really embracing that kind of like six-man role, and he is playing great as of late. Well, the Cougars got in trouble there defensively. There were so many options. You've got Dason Youngblood, Andre Green, and Frank Stain as all possible options. Hoffman will respond. No in and out. A floater was up and in, but it popped out. And Dixie State can go over the 20-point lead mark. No, but a carry first against Andre Wilson. That's the second of the night back in the first half. Was it Jack Pengoff yeah, yeah. that got called for a carry? But, you know, I think he does palm Paul the basketball, but yeah. a lot of guys do, and it goes uncalled. But just enough. And the official was about six what? feet away, yeah. kind of to where that palm happened, so he was right on top of it. 7-10 remaining. Here's some food for thought. What's the purpose of the of the palming call? Is it similar to traveling? As Oliver misses, rebound to Hyatt. And he's fouled on the putback. He'll get a couple of free throws. Guys, enlighten me. Well, well, go ahead, Mike. Well, it, it's that hesitation, right? And it puts the defense in a disadvantage where True. if they think that you're stopping your momentum, you know, that they're going to change their defensive position. If, if, if an offensive player can keep the ball on their hip and move and then put it down and go again, that, that's extremely difficult. It's to the change. It's, it's, it speeds up this, the change yeah. of direction. Yes. Hyatt knocks in the first free throw. I was never good at it, or I would have done it more. <laughs> We didn't have, I mean, growing up, I mean, you didn't have that. I mean, now you, you watch some of these pro guys and, and how they make those moves, that's exactly what they do and that's what they use. I mean, LeBron James, remember that game this year where he, against the Jazz, where he dribbled up, picked the ball oh up, walked two steps, put it back down again. How do they not call that? <laughs> that went uncalled. Yeah. It was more than two steps. He walked like four steps with the basketball. Set up his offense, ordered his dinner. Superstar. Let Treatment him. is alive and well. He left the <laughs> arena to get dinner. Dixie State by 17, 71-54. Wilson will wrap it around back to Youngblood. Baseline left jumper. Rims out. And Martin the rebound for CCU. Tell you what, nobody wants to face the Lakers right now, though. They're playing well. And I know Anthony Davis misses some games, but whew, they're good. I mean, look at what they gave up to get ATM. You see Ingram last night dropping 49. That was fun to watch. Yeah. Hit between him and Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, what they combined for nearly 100 Almost points. 100, 100 points. points. Yeah. 49 and 46. 71 54. Dixie State by 17. Nobody's got more than 15 in this game, I don't think. No. Well, 15 is Hoffman. Green with 13. Nothing wrong with watching a good old fashioned team basketball game, though. Both teams playing it. And Colorado Christian going to turn it over. That pass went right through the hands of Christian Hyatt. Almost too unselfish right there. Somebody needs to take the ball and, and make a play for, for the Cougars. Be a little bit more assertive. Instead, you end up with a turnover. 6-10 remaining. NC State trying to get win number 13 of the season and Armac win number 8. Still tied atop the Armac standings. Chatwin. Driving the baseline left. Stops under the hoop. And what do we got? Travel. Travel. I couldn't, I couldn't use my x-ray vision and see through Coach Judkins. Well, the outside official called us. You had to look way out near half court to see where the call came from. He's trying to gather himself. I was under the basket. Had to get his feet underneath him. Not required moving that pivot foot just about an inch. 545 to play here inside the Burns. Hoffman backing in on Schofield. Turning around and floated with the left hand, fading away, and he gets it to go. And that was a lot harder left hand hook going away on the baseline than the one he just had rim That's out right. right at the middle at the front of the rim. Yeah, it's a good point, Devin. He's a solid post player, and, and he can do it both shoulders. He can turn left shoulder, he can go right shoulder. He's got that nice little hook shot with either hand. Uh, he, he's a really good player. For a sophomore, you know, he, he's having a great game tonight, really doing a good job of keeping his team uh, going, but he's, he's having a solid game. 
5.33 remaining. Dixie State a 71-56 lead. And Trailblazers miss a free throw after Dickerson fouled. Dickerson's got the rebound. And Cantwell inside and a blocking foul. And Hunter Schofield not happy about it. He's saying that Cantwell extended the arm. A tough call against Hunter in that circumstance. He felt like he, he was pushed off. That's his fourth. You know, he's still moving, but he does take the brunt of that. And, and the official in that outside official sees him still moving. I don't yeah, think he could see much else than that. And I don't know that I'd necessarily disagree with that call. So, you know, sometimes you'd like to see that go no call. Yeah. But they've called it pretty tonight, and they've been pretty consistent tonight. And players, yeah. you know, at this point in the game, five minutes, 23 seconds to go, you got you to gotta adjust. You got to know. Both free throws good. 13-point game again. 71-58. 5-20 remaining. Here's Schofield. To Stain. And Stain has it stripped away. Yeah, they were overplaying the wing. Schofield tried to go back door, but there was no separation, and then it got stolen. Five minutes remaining. He stayed a 13-point lead. There's Hyatt. Will stop in the lane, jumped it, banked off the window. And they're going to call. And Dixie Luke. State had the rebound, but now they're going to call Hunter Schofield. And that's it for Hunter. That's his fifth, I think. He's working on Hoffman, and I, I, I couldn't tell exactly what happened. I think they were just trying to body each other up a little bit for, for that rebound. Hoffman coming in, and he's kind of leaning and pushing into him just a little bit there, up high. And gets caught with this fifth foul. He didn't like it. You know, and this is where Coach Judkins is good. He calls a timeout, tells the assistant coach, hey, you take this. I need to talk to the official here for a second. I want to get some clarification so I can go help my big guy. What did you see? Where did that call come from? Because on, from what we're seeing, that, it's, it's not, a, not a foul. So Coach Judkins, very strategic timeout here. He, he's, he's teaching. He wants to hear the explanation from the official. Uh, let, his, let his assistant coach talk in the huddle. Let his captains go for a little bit. But you can see he's not yelling at the official. Just a good conversation trying to get clarification. I still don't think he likes to call. No, he doesn't <laughs> like it. He, he's going he's gonna to turn and walk away, and then he'll say what he really thinks. You know, a lot of times though, when you're bodying up, you're bodying up with the, the, the shoulder, the hip. That time he kind of went in with his hands yeah. up around neck high, and I think that just caught the eye of the, of the officials. 71-58, Dixie State a 13-point lead with 4.50 remaining. And at the line is Hoffman. Makes the first. He's got 18. Yeah, you know what? Hoffman's been, been tough tonight. Using his size, using his frame. Showing a pretty good touch there from the foul line, too. Those look good yeah, in rhythm. Yeah. Makes both free throws. 82% free throw shooter this season. Great player and only a sophomore. That's a big feet on that kid, man. I've seen those shoes a couple times tonight. That's a size 17 at least. 71-60. It's an 11-point game. Woo! Inside, Jerry oh. Green on the feed from Jack Pagankov. That was a sensational. Double clutch lays it in. I love the helper, though. Just that no-look, one-handed yep. flip pass right where Green needed it to be, and he finishes. Well, he just made us look like Jesus. He's definitely the Skywatch player of the game. And a whistle and a foul on the other end. Goes against Frank Stain. Yeah, 15 for Green. Is that tie a career Ty's high? Tie's a career high. He just, you like about Green, he moves well for a big man, too. I mean, he goes up, double clutch, lays it in. Coach Judkins right now not happy with the fouls on his team. He committed 23 fouls to Colorado Christians, 22. He's, he's told his guys, you foul, you come out. So we may see a lot of substitutions here. We may need to suit up. Well, you know, you're nursing a lead. But me and Coach. Yeah. And, and, and the next one's going to put you in the double bonus. So you obviously don't want to foul in this situation. And the game has kind of got stuck in neutral a little yeah. bit with the amount of fouls called. This pace is kind of at a tortoise pace. Hyatt makes both free throws. 
He's got four in 11 point game against 73 62. Chat one to Pagan Kopp. 4.07 to go. Green to the right side. Pagan Kopp, backdoor pass, and Green will lay it up and in. He wanted to dunk it, but didn't quite get up high enough. And a new career high for Jared Green. But another just sensational pass from yeah. Jack. Awesome pick and roll, you know, where they get the defense moving to one side, and it really opens up that space. And now Dixie State with a steal. 75-62, Dixie State with the lead. And Parker slows it up. Passes inside, Chatwin's got it. Shot is blocked and into the hands of Dickerson. Dickerson has it knocked out of his hands and a whistle rings out. And that'll bring us to the under four media timeout. And the foul goes against Jack Pagenkopf, his third. 3.27 remaining. Dixie State a 75-62 lead. Come back after this one-minute timeout for the final three and a half minutes of this ballgame. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Hi, I'm Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in, because for 75 years, Smokey only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. Meanwhile, the song was wrong. We did start the fire. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. Seventy-five, sixty-two. Dixie State, thirteen-point lead, three twenty-seven to go. And you know, the discussion at the table during the timeout was: Dixie State team's got to you know, learn to put a team away. Yeah, they've got to have that Muhammad Ali float like a butterfly, sting like a bee mentality, where they just got that confidence. They don't have it. They don't have that ability to just put a team away. We saw UCCS was hanging yes. in at home, close. Metro, they, they, they lost to Mines at home, and then the Metro game. First free throw up and in for Dickerson. Well, part of it's, you know, shooting. He's not shooting quite as good in the second half. I mean, 41% in the game now. Dickerson makes both free throws. It's an 11-point game with 3.25 to go. Trailblazers are going to need a few more buckets at least. And they haven't gotten a lot of shots. They've really slowed the pace. Check that at 48% right now in the game for the Trailblazers. Here's Youngblood to Parker. Parker to Green. Evades Hoffman. Kicks to Youngblood. His shot, no. And Hoffman the rebound. Jerry Green really working hard out there. Almost had the offensive rebound. Into the left corner. Three on the way from Dickerson. It pops out. And Paganikoff the rebound for Dixie State. 75-64, 2.45 remaining. Newbold bounces into Green. Kicks it back out. Green gets out of the lane to avoid the three-second call. Pagenkopf to the left corner, Youngblood. Top of the key, Green. Ten to shoot. 2.35 on the game clock. Pagenkopf. Five to shoot. Trying to bounce into Green, and it's tipped and taken away. The frustration there is you've got nobody in the paint. You've got the point guard on Jared Green, and it's a low bounce pass. And Engeser has his pass tipped out of bounds in CCU. We'll maintain possession with 2.21 to go. And if, if I'm CCU and I'm trying to drop a play for somebody to shoot a three, it's going to be Ingus. No question. Yep. But he, where has he been? He hasn't been playing in the last five or six minutes. Well, they've done a better job extending their zone, not letting him get catches. We, we talk about the amount of time Coach Judkins had in the locker room. I mean, you can see some of these adjustments are paying off. Green gets a much-needed breather. He was yeah, He gassed. was tugging on the jersey. He's played well tonight. No question. Player of the game. Inside Hoffman will lay it up and in. Well, and he's been the player of the game for yeah. the Cougars. No I mean, question. No question. Coach Hiranaka sees Jeff Green come out of the game. They're going right inside to Hoffman. 
75-66. Nine point Dixie State lead. Youngblood is fouled. And two free throws coming for Jason Youngblood. You know, we, we talked about Coach Aranaki. He, he's been around the game for a long time. A long time head coach at Seattle Pacific. Yeah. Nationally ranked, very good. A stint there at Washington State. Uh, he, he's been around for a while, and he, he knows how to coach this game for sure. First free throw up and in. Well, so does John Judkins, and, and the game plan clear in the second half. Offensively, you don't want to go down into the yep. block. And only two, three threes attempted in this second half of the Trailblazers, and they're two for three. But even when they, in that last possession previous, they went down low, got the kick out, probably either should have shot it or put it right back down to the block, ended up with that turnover from Jack. But... You know, they're, they're trying to pound the post. That's the game plan. And, hey, they got 11-point lead. 77-66. Hoffman Whoa. will try a three, or is it a two? I don't know. His feet are big enough. They could have sneaked on the it's line. I couldn't tell. 24 points for Hoffman. 77-69. Eight-point game. Nichols is fouled by Hoffman. Well, probably not a bad foul. You put Nichols on the line. Hasn't got there a lot this year. Certainly don't want to put Jack or Andre or Layton on the line. 77-69. Jacob Nichols. Free throw up and in. Another good game for Jacob Nichols. He brings a lot of energy. You know, if you can get some points out of him, that's, that's even better, but... Uh, he's done a great job coming off the bench tonight. Second free throw rims off the, the left side. 1.30 to go. Trailblazers a nine-point lead, 78-69. If I'm Hoffman, I'm just going to pull up and just start shooting threes from everywhere. Here's Angusser, deep three straight away. Too strong. Andre Wilson the rebound. Wilson ahead to Paganikoff. 1.14 to go. And it's like you, you like to say, Mike, time in possession here. No need to rush a shot. And Nichols call for the foul. Excuse me, Nichols is going to the free throw line. He was fouled. Judd, he a little frustrated. So he's too busy Judd watching Newbold get frustrated. Well, you wanted him to go post up. He, I think he had a little advantage there, and he's out top floating around. And look at Judd, he coaching him up, having yeah. fun. I, that's what we talked about in the pregame. He never stops coaching. It doesn't nope. matter. The time, the situation, the lead. I mean, sometimes you'll look down at benches and there'll be coaches just kind of sitting there. Coach Judkins never does that. Well, he knows I don't he's think I've be... ever seen Coach Judkins sit down during a game. Well, I've been in a few games and been told he's had to. <laughs> <laughs> Nichols splits the free throws. He's got seven, and it's a 10-point game, 79-69. Hoffman for three again. No, off the right side. Nichols the rebound. Under a minute to play. And Martin... Will foul Pagankoff. And Jack, as soon as he was fouled, he tossed that ball three quarters of the way down the floor to the to the ref waiting under the hoop. You know, Jack's just kind of controlled the game. Hasn't gotten out and ran probably as much as Jack would like, but he's played a lot of minutes yeah. this year, so you know they, they've got they've gotten him a break. I'd probably lift him. I don't know why he's still in this game. He got to turn around and play Regis tomorrow night, but he he doesn't seem to get tired, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Nine points for Pagan Coffee makes both 12 point lead. 81 69. 53 seconds remaining. Dickerson will bounce to Martin to the right side. Angus sir catch and shoot three missed it. Foul ball bounces off of Cantwell into the hands of Martin, and then he turns it over. And Hoffman will foul Wilson on the way up the floor. 40 seconds remain. Uh, that's the play that Colorado Christian wanted. And Dixie State yeah. left. Ingus are open. He just didn't bury that triple. <laughs> he, he's cooled off a little in the second half. Hasn't quite shot as much as I anticipated. I mean, came into tonight, 81 threes attempted. And tonight, Ingus has only shot eight times. He's 5 of 8, too, even with uh, a couple misses here in the second half. He was perfect 4 for 4 at the half. I'd love to see the stats at halftime. You know, going into the half, it was all Angusser and Hoffman. You know, and, and they came out, and, and Dixie State did a very good job defensively holding them. You know, those first four minutes. And Hoffman, he's, he's had a great game. He's continued to go off. But I think the defensive effort on those two, the second half, has been a huge difference. 
Andre Wilson splits the free throws. It's an 82-69 Dixie State lead. And TCU the other way. Hewn gets one to go. 82-71. Yeah, and nice. a foul called against CCU with 24.3 seconds remaining. And first attempt of the night for Colin Hoon and knocks it down. Well, we've got a, a minute to look at uh, for these free throws. Let's go to our catering concepts play of the game, guys. Uh, it's going to be that play from back in the first half, the wraparound pass from Jack Pagankoff. Getting inside, this. he just bounced pass right around Martin. And Hunter Schofield lays it up and in for the catering concepts play of the game. And Jack Pagankoff is the perfect point guard in John Judkins' yeah. system. And, and plays like that make him, make him special, special player. Yeah, you could see him seeing that play develop as soon as he got the ball. He knew exactly what he was trying to do, what he wanted to do. And he had just had the confidence to make that pass. That's what made that pass so good. Is he knew it would be there. He could thread the needle and is able to execute the play. He makes both free throws. He's got 11 and will likely finish with 11, 7, and 5. They go with two, point, two steals as well. Shot clock is off. Three from the right wing. No. Martin has the offensive rebound to Dickerson. He'll drive inside. Free throw line jumper, yes. 12 points. They're fighting to the end, this Cougar team. Newbold catches the long pass, and he'll be able to just dribble this one out. Here's Jack, and we've hit triple zeros. Game over, 84-73. Trailblazers win it by 11 points. Colorado Christian hung tough, and, and it's like you said earlier in the broadcast, Mike, that did not look like a 1-14 team or a 1-8 in the RMAC team. And you know when you get a conference play, every game's going to be tough. But uh, Colorado Christian came in and played a very good game tonight. Dixie State able to make just a few more plays to get the 11-point win. They, they, they played hard tonight. There's no question Colorado Christian was not going to lay down. But Dixie State came out ready. You know, this was a game that they just grind. They just kept continued to grind and, and find a way. They got a lot of things done tonight. They worked on the zone offense. They worked on man-to-man. -man. They press a little bit. Uh, they, they got a lot done tonight, including an 11-point win. Yeah, and really, uh, after the split, the last two weekends of RMAC action, now you set yourself up with that win on Friday night, make another one happen tomorrow night, try to put that win streak at three when you play Regis, and then two more home games next weekend. And before you go out on that long road stretch, maybe you can get that win streak back up to five and be you know, still sitting atop of the conference standings, depending on what happens with the other two teams. Of course, entering tonight, Dixie State 7-2 and two and, and tied with Mines. And uh, what are you laughing at, Carrick? Jacob Nichols. Ah, he's right here. He told me before the game he was going to run over to the, our crowd mic and give his mom a shout out. Oh, nice. So shout out, Mama Nichols. <laughs> he was running over here with a smile on his face and then stopped and shook his head. You know, he said, "No, of, I better not." We've got a lot of players that are thinking at home. You know, talking to Cameron Chatwin, <laughs> hoping to give a shout out to his brothers <laughs> Milkshake and uh, McFlurry. You know, guys loving knowing that their families are supporting yeah. him and, and want to give a shout out to families all over the place. Yeah. We're gonna. I was going to say, we're going to break this down inside the Guru Sports Grill uh, post-game report. Before we do that, though, uh, something el else new we're doing. Let's jump right into our second-half highlights. And after those highlights, we're going to let TV be done, and we'll finish things up on the radio side. Cameron Chatwin started things off in the second half. He got a three. They would review it, make sure it was a three, and indeed it was. Jared Green, though, our SkyWest Airlines player of the game tonight, a career-high 17 for Jared tonight, and he just was fantastic tonight, as was Jack Pagankoff. He is every night. Yeah, just steady. Jack just steady. I, I was more impressed with his distributing than his scoring, but when he rebounds and runs, good things happen. There you see more of Jared Green, and I, he just keeps getting better and better and better, and obviously big, strong, raw talent that's uh, coming on strong for Coach Judkins, and Juddy likes to have multiple bigs, and you know he has He's a different him. dimension, you know, with Schofield, Newbold, Chatwin. and now Green, and Chatwin. This team has some size, and those are easy buckets, but he's, he's making them, and they're executing the plays exactly how Coach Judkins draws them up. Trailblazers with an 84-73 win. Just to quickly summarize, Jared Green, our uh, SkyWest Airlines player of the game, our catering concepts play of the game was uh, Jack Pagankoff passing to Hunter Schofield in the first half, and the Trailblazers win it. 84-73, Dixie State is 13-3 overall, 8-2 in the RMAC. Let's step away. Let's take a three-minute timeout on the radio side, on the, the TV side. We're done. We'll let you go. We'll let CEC 
get cleaned up. We appreciate our CEC TV crew. If you are watching on TV or on the internet and you want to hear Coach Judkins in the postgame report, get your radio on, ESPN Radio 97.7 FM or uh, the, the ESPN app. Uh, what, what's the app? Uh, ES yeah, just you can just search Sports Radio yep. 97.7, download the app real quickly, or go to the website, sportsradio977.com. And uh, always fun to hear what Coach Judkins has to say, and always a little funner character after a victory. Absolutely. So that'll do it for us on the TV side. Radio, let's take a three-minute timeout, and we'll come back with the Guru Sports Grill postgame report.